Oklahoma. Weather is threatening today. Thunderstorms in the forecast. It is raining right now as we get ready for our Big 8 Game of the Week. Featuring the Sooners of Oklahoma and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Jim Ryan. Jim, they call this the Bedlam Series, but quite frankly, for Oklahoma, a team that has dominated this series, it has been sweet dreams for the Sooners and a nightmare for the Cowboys. And it doesn't get any easier as the Cowboys come in here 0-5 in the Big 8. Pat Jones would like nothing better than to knock off the Sooners, but it's going to be tough for him to do it today. Well, Pat Jones got a piece of good news this week. Tony Jones, his freshman quarterback, who got the start much of this year, who was out with an injured shoulder, he may get some playing time today, but Andy Love has done a pretty good job stepping up in the starters role over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Andy Lugland has not thrown the ball all that way. Well, only 36%, but Tony Jones, as you mentioned, the true freshman, started at the fourth game of the season and is really going to come off the bench and try to spark this Cowboy offense. What does Jones give this club that perhaps Andy Loveland cannot? Better legs, number one. He's got a good arm, but he can run the ball very effectively when he gets in trouble and he can scramble very well. The Cowboys, though, Jim, have to be a little bit concerned about how rusty he might be right now. Well, especially in a true freshman, and he's coming off the bench into a situation in Norman, Oklahoma. That's not the easiest of conditions to, you know, come off the uh, injured list into. We'll see if he is a little rusty. Well, the Oklahoma Sooners, this their last home game of the year for OU and for Kale Gundy, their quarterback, is the senior campaign, his last game here at Memorial Stadium. And Gundy, a chance to move up the charts in total offense as far as the Big 8 is concerned. What a career he has had here in Norman, Oklahoma. As you see, he's fourth in the Big 8 in total offense with a couple of great games. Could move to number two, and that would put him right behind big brother Mike, who will be on the other sideline coaching the quarterback for Oklahoma State. Certainly, Mike Gundy's numbers are unapproachable by yeah. anybody right now in the Big 8 Conference. Well, Duke Fry, it's raining right now. How is it down on Owen Field? Well, let's put it this way, Dave. It stinks. It's really <laughs> bad right now it's not pouring at the moment it was a few minutes ago they actually watered the field about an hour before game time for 15 minutes that's to make the turf a little bit more tacky actually the surface although they're going to replace this with natural grass next year is pretty good for the rain your feet are going to stick you're not going to have a whole lot of problem i don't think sliding around today but watch for the loose balls and watch how they squirt once they hit the ground today all right, Bedlam continues, weather-wise, at least in Norman. It's the Sooners and the Cowboys next. Big 8 College Football 93 on Prime Network is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. For that deep-down body thirst, nothing works better than Gatorade. Oklahoma, the Sooners, and the Cowboys getting set to go head-to-head -head in this continuance of the Bedlam series. And today, they're going to play it under cloudy skies and wet conditions. Here in Oklahoma, they do not allow you to bring an umbrella to Owen Field, so you've got to make the best of things as far as uh, any kind of plastic covering you might have. You see the temperature not bad, but the rain is definitely in the forecast. Now guiding the Cowboys in his 10th year is Pat Jones, the all-time winningest coach in Cowboy history, but he has come under fire here lately. The Cowboys 0-5 in the Big A Conference, and for the first time in his coaching career, he's starting to feel a few poo birds in Stillwater. Well, for Gary Gibbs, he's felt the boos many times in Norman, now starting to get some of the accolades with his club at 7-2. Gibbs in his fifth year, and you see his overall record. Overall in this series, they call it the Bedlam Series, and that really dates more to the wrestling series between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. This is the 88th meeting between these clubs in football, and Oklahoma a commanding 69-11-7 overall lead in the series. And here in Norman, Oklahoma has won 33 times, lost just five, and tied twice. Last year, this game, Jim, ended in a 15-all tie in Stillwater. A couple of the uh, Oklahoma players talking about a little revenge factor in this game because they were not pleased to uh, come out of Stillwater just with a 15-all tie. And this should be an interesting game as uh, Oklahoma State's going to go on defense first. And really, defense is the strength of the Cowboy team. Now, defense is definitely the strength of this Cowboy team, especially with All-American candidate Jason Gilden and Butkus Award candidate Keith Burns. Burns, uh, one of the greatest linebackers in the country. And 
kicking off for the Cowboys, Scott Tyner, their punter. He'll be kicking with the wind at his back, a high end over end kick, taken right at the goal line. And a hole at the 20, quickly closed up, and falling forward to the 24-yard line. There's Cale Gundy, the quarterback of the Sooners, in his senior campaign, and arguably having his best year, and the best year perhaps in the Big 8 Conference. Yes, I think he should be a candidate for all Big 8. Look at those numbers, 1,800 yards. He's the most prolific passer in Sooners history, and really having a good year, despite taking a lot of hits. As a matter of fact, he's taking a lot of hits, so you saw the concussion he got against Colorado. And a concussion against Colorado came when he was trying to run for a first down. Had his head, his helmet slapped down to this turf here at Owen Field and was out for some time. Leaf Licker on first down. And Gundy wide open. He finds his receiver, Corey Warren. Hit down at midfield. Corey Warren looking heavenward, but he should look back to Kale Gundy and say, nice throw, big guy. Little trickery right off the top as uh, Gibbs is going to try to get up on top of Pat Jones very early. And it really wasn't necessarily that Oklahoma State was so fooled. Their defense stayed back, but they just got Corey Warren open as he came all the way across the field from right to left. Warren now his 25th catch of the year. And the Sooners already in Cowboy territory as James Allen takes it over to the right side. He picks up about six yards on first down. Well, Oklahoma, Ricky Brady, the tight end. He is having an All-America type year at tight end for the Sooners. 31 catches already for Brady, the favorite receiver of K.L. Gundy. Chuck Langston at center. That's key for this Sooner lineup. Langston missed a couple of games ago and against Kansas State, the Sooner club felt like that made the world a difference in that contest. So Gundy comes up behind Chuck Langston at center. We'll set the Cowboy defense for you in just a moment. Second down, five yards to go. The give again to Allen, breaks outside. Allen down at the 40, close to a first down, he'll be just shy. Let's take a look at that Cowboy defensive front line and Jason Gilded, already five and a half sacks this year. He's been a terrific player, not real huge, but very, very quick. And Keith Burns certainly should uh, get a lot of consideration, not only for all Big 8, but for all America. As far as the defensive backfield is concerned, Charles Werner with four interceptions. He's tied for the conference lead in that department. They're going to measure now for first down. And didn't I call it? Just shy of the first down. Good eyes from way <laughs> up the top of this. <laughs> Why are they measuring? Well, obviously, they're not patched into the feed here on Prime Network. We should tell the officials just walk, look up here. You'll give them a thumbs up, thumbs down. That's right. <laughs> But from where we're at, it's a long look from the field to us. I'm, I'm looking through glasses, through binoculars. I couldn't tell. 13.42 left to go. First quarter, just the start of things. And Kale Gundy. Gundy, who had three touchdown passes against Kansas earlier this year and rushed for three touchdowns against the Texas Longhorns. He guided this Sooner club to victories in their first five games. And the Sooners, once upon a time, were ranked as high as eighth in the country. Now ranked 17. So third and in inches. Gundy almost dropped the ball in the exchange from Langston, picked it up, and picked up the first down. You know, Dave, we're talking about the weather conditions here. It was raining, and will uh, the weather is calling for rain during the course of the afternoon. And I think you have to differentiate. When it is raining, then you have a wet ball. I think that that is a disadvantage to the offense, an advantage to the defense. If it's just a wet field, now I think the, op the offense has the advantage because they know where they're going. They're making the cuts. So the flag's flying at half mast this week in honor of Veterans Day. Well, the Sooners still on the attack, first and 10. Gundy, the pitch back to Allen. Not much room on the short side as he goes out of bounds, but again, good gain for Oklahoma on first down. And the Sooners, Jim, have averaged almost seven yards on first down this year. And they're doing it with plays like this. And this is what Watson Brown, the new offensive coordinator, has brought back to Oklahoma. A little more option, and Oklahoma State strings it out very well, but still about a five-yard gain. Oh, Allen now a couple of rushes, 10 yards for him, and Gerald Moore is healthy. He'll see some playing time today. The other freshman tailback for the Sooners. Second down, five yards to go. Allen again. Well, they're really running hard over that right side, but a fumble of the football. Who's got it? Oklahoma State says they do. And we have not had an official.
official indication yet, but now we're saying Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have recovered the fumbled football of James Allen, and the Cowboys celebrate first here in Norman. The Sooners plus 13 in turnovers, and you see Jason Gilton actually being held, and it looks like he gets his right hand in there and knocks the ball out. We'll see James Allen going to his right. Good and tackle there actually, by Javon Langford. Yeah, the ball just comes out. James Allen was called carrying the ball out in his hand rather than close to his body with a slippery ball. It comes out. Now, Duke talked about it, a wet big skin today. And will that be a factor in the contest? Good gang tackling by Oklahoma. Well, let's take a look at Andy Loveland, his senior campaign, sort of written off at the start of this year. The third deep on the depth charts for Oklahoma State, but he's worked his way into the starting lineup. Yeah, he started his career in, in 1990 at Colorado State University. Then he went to a junior co college, Palomar Junior College, now at Oklahoma State. He's kind of an older kid. As a matter of fact, his teammates call him George Blanda. Now, that's, that's pretty old. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, really that's old. almost cruel. <laughs> Pick up of two, second and eight. Loveland wants to throw. Incomplete on the far side. Loveland has not, as you mentioned, Jim, thrown the ball very well, just 19 of 52, only 36%. David Thompson, his tailback, a true freshman. He's run the ball rather well for the Cowboys this year. And he has run behind a front line that features Mike Butler, a senior out of Muskogee, Oklahoma. So now Loveland faced with third and long. With the wind at their back, the Cowboys on third and eight. Football. Oklahoma State recovers the football, but they'll have to punt it away. We'll see the replay coming from the upside of the uh, the top of the defense and making the tackle and stripping the ball. And you see so often that outside linebackers and everybody that's coming on the blitz is trying to do the old Lawrence Taylor move, and that's chopped down on that ball. It's not enough to make the sack anymore. You want to make the fumble or caused the fumble also. Darius Johnson back deep for the Sooners. John Anderson made the sack. He coming up from his strong safety position. Scott Tyner, the best punter statistically in the Big 8 this year. He's averaging over 44 yards per kick. Gets this one up with the win. Johnson will take it at his own 35. Breaks a couple of tackles. Look out! Johnson just has Tyner to beat! And he wants everybody to see what he looks like, doesn't he? Now the Kale Gundy move, taking the helmet off quickly. It, it was a nice kick, but Oklahoma State had a number of shots at him early, but after that, all their pursuit was on the left side of the field, and he was able to go right up the right side of the field and all the way down to the 13-yard line. But the bad news for the Sooners, a flag way back at where he caught it at the 35-yard line. In fact, a couple of flags. So a big break there for the Cowboys. Push in the back. On the return. First down. Terry Turlington, our referee today. Illegal block in the rain pouring down now here in Norman with 11-11 to go in the first quarter. Still scoreless in the Bedlam series. Back to Oklahoma, the Sooners and the Cowboys still scoreless in the first quarter. Let's take a look back and see if we can see the penalty against Oklahoma on the return. It's going to be number 51, Broderick Simpson, right there. He just nails the Oklahoma State coverage guy right in the back, and that is a uh, good call by the officials. That's an unfortunate play for the Sooners because Johnson had already gone by. Right, he, he really didn't affect the return. Well, you see the rain pelting down now. It's going to make it tougher for everyone. Gerald Moore on the pitch back. Again, right side. Moore with a big hole. A gain of 15 on first down. What an unusual play. What we're going to see is Cale Gundy going to his left. 
and he gets Gerald Moore going with him, but then Gerald Moore stops, and it's actually like a reverse just run by the tailback. He just reverses his field before he gets the ball, gets a nice block from Stamps out in front, gets into the secondary. That's the slippery field play they put in just yeah. for this game. <laughs> Boy, the Sooners with a flea flicker on first down, and then that play, they're pulling out all the stops against their cross-state rival. First down for Oklahoma, and again Moore. Big hole up the middle. Moore with a gain of about eight on first down. Gerald Moore, who missed a couple of games with a sprained ankle. They call him Thunder. James Allen, the other freshman tailback for Oklahoma, they call him Lightning. Very appropriate today, huh? Well, I should say, as we get down to Duke Pride. Oh, thanks, Dave. The conditions have just changed a little bit with this thunderstorm <laughs> coming down all of a sudden. As you can see, the water dripping off my hat. Obviously, it makes things more precarious as far as handling the ball is concerned. But I think, like Jim does, that maybe right now the offense has a little bit of an advantage, although they maybe can't throw the ball as well as they'd like to in this rain. First down again, Oklahoma, thanks to Dwayne Chandler, runs for the first down, and now flag comes in, another one, a personal foul, perhaps. Flag came in late, as uh, you saw perhaps Joe Carollo, a little extracurricular activity for Oklahoma. Probably going to have offsetting penalties, as often does. The official's just going to throw the flags to have offsetting penalties. They'll have no net effect on the game. But I think it's just a little warning to both teams. Let's not get carried away here. We don't want any uh, antics. We don't want any fighting back and forth. And the officials want to let the players know they're in control of the game. Did you see the umpire there, Ron Johnson? He, he wiped off his flag before he put it back in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Trying Dead to keep himself foul. dry. Personal foul on the offense. First down. Pat Jones has got to like that call. And I'm saying, yeah, let's push him back that way. Well, Jones uh, criticized by some Cowboy fans. Uh, he hasn't heard that much, but Oklahoma State over the last four-plus years, just 15, 36, and one. This comes on the heels of all those great teams with Thurman Thomas, Mike Gundy, Hartley Dykes, and, of course, Barry Sanders. Well, of course, they got hurt by the sanctions and the probation both these teams did in the late 80s, early 90s. And right now, Oklahoma is hurting itself by penalty. They had what appeared to be first and 10 on the 13-yard line going in. A penalty knocks them back. Now they're going to have first and 10 at their own 37. as a 15-yard penalty. That and then the fumble, of course, by James Allen has hurt them. This to Chandler. Chandler with a lot of room to run on a first down at midfield for Dwayne Chandler. That front line of Oklahoma is taking the little heat for not being able to protect Kale Gundy as well as they might have. But in the running game, they're very, very good, and they're very big, and Oklahoma State is not very big up front. You see they're being manhandled a little bit on the front line, and when you win the war in the trenches, you're often going to win the game. The trenches are wet today, too. Chandler's run hard already, almost 20 yards. First and 10. Nice spin move by Moore. And he gets a lot more. Close to another first down at the Oklahoma State 39. We're going to see his Keith Burns coming up the middle on a blitz. And he just doesn't wrap up. You see Moore get the ball and he sees him right away and just not able to wrap up. Burns just throwing his body in there. And that's what he wants to do. He just wants to make the big hit. But in all honesty, to make the play, sometimes you have to come a little bit more under control. Jim, we were talking about Oklahoma on first down this year, averaging almost seven a game. And Don King, our crack statistician, tells us right now the Sooners averaging 12 yards on wow. first down. You know, that hasn't been all that great for them. The two games they averaged the most, over nine yards per, per uh, down on first down, mm -hmm. Colorado and Kansas State. Oh. They lost them both. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Oklahoma has certainly been successful in this series. Uh, they call it the Bedlam Series, and there have been some games that have been kind of wild. 83 would be a good example. Oklahoma comes back with 18 points in the fourth quarter to win that game 21 to 20. Moore having a big day already. 34 yards for Gerald Moore. First and 10. And again, that same play to Moore where he stops and goes the other way. And it's successful again. Another first down near the 25. I really like this play as we'll look at it again. 
feet. Oklahoma gets those quick linebackers, and that's the strength of the Cowboy defense is their linebackers and their quickness. If you can get them all flowing one way and then change direction, you're going to have a big gainer, and that's been the case twice with that kind of counter option type of play that the Oklahoma Sooners and Watson Brown have put into their game plan for today, and it's working very effectively. Pretty good run average there. Wow. Huh? Rushing average of four carries, 47 yards already for Moore. You know, last week against Missouri, he rushed nine times for 63 yards. There he goes again. And most of the runs so far, Jim, have come around that right side. Yeah, they really have. And what the Oklahoma offensive line and up front people are doing is they're getting Oklahoma State, the Cowboys, on the ground a lot. And again, we should mention that it's a real advantage when there's just a wet field. If it is a little bit slippery down there, the advantage goes to the offense when you're running the football because the person making the cut knows where he's going. The defender has to react. That takes a more sharp cut, and it's very difficult to do. Watson Brown, he has made all the world a difference here at Oklahoma. The offensive coordinator strolling the sidelines there with a headset on. Gundy said he has made me into the quarterback I am right now, and Gundy's having a superlative year. Moore again trying to glide outside, this time hit out of bounds right at the 20-yard line. Big hit in there by number 40, Richie Ainsley. Ainsley in his senior campaign for Oklahoma, 14 seniors playing their last game at Memorial Stadium. I really like Richie Ainsley. You know, Keith Burns gets a lot of the accolades here or, uh, at Oklahoma State, but I yeah. think Richie Ainsley is really a linebacker that is uh, just on par with a Keith Burns. He's really a guy that makes plays sideline to sideline. He's very quick. I think he's a little underrated. Well, you see, Oklahoma's already rushed near 100 yards. Wow. And Oklahoma State is, of course, the loss, the quarterback sack factors in there. Third and four right now for OU. They're not going to put it up. It's Dwayne Chandler right side. And a penalty flag comes in. Could be a face mask. I think Richie Ansley, on the end. Excuse me, Dave. Richie Ansley is saying that he was held. And the way Oklahoma, the body language there, it might be the call. Yeah, it is the case, and it's going to be against the Sooners. And again, the third penalty has really hurt them. Yeah, easily. Uh, Chandler had first down yardage. That's called back, the holding call against Ainsley. On Ainsley, I should say. You see the weather gear out here in Norman today. Even Hold the in. weather gear here is On red. The <laughs> <laughs> they come prepared at Oklahoma. A few uh, yellow rain suits dot what you're seeing there, but mostly red. Oklahoma continues to exploit the right side behind Milton Overton and Harry Stamps Jr., their right guard and right tackle, respectively, and really doing a good job kind of wiping out the left side of the Oklahoma State Cowboy defensive line. Mark it off from the point of infraction, so it'll make it third and five for Oklahoma. Gundy wants to throw. He does to Chandler. He's got some room. He's got the first down. He's out of bounds at the 10. Just a little swing pass to the right-hand side, and this is good. This is what happens when you're in a zone coverage, and it's actually like a little screen pass, like a quick screen pass. And he was able to get behind some blockers, but Green able to catch him from behind. And nice uh, execution and, and nice play call by the Sooners. So first and goal for the Sooners at the nine-yard line. And you see, the Sooners have been successful in the red zone this year. Gerald Moore tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Ainsley makes the play there. Moore falls forward back to the original line at the nine. They might have given him a yard on the play down to the eight. But Ainsley came up and made a nice play there for Oklahoma State. Well, some Cowboy fans, uh, Dallas Cowboy fans, there's some Oklahoma State Cowboy fans here as well. You, know, you can actually hear the shoes of the players down there kind of sloshing around. That's how wet this field is. <laughs> and a young fan being given the chance at some history here today, watching part of the Bedlam series. 
Dundee comes out, throws it into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma! That's Albert Hall. His first touchdown catch of the year. a flag but the referees are con the, the officials are they might have thrown a flag on the celebration oh, I see anything excessive, let's get huh? the explanation from terry turlington unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense that is a little extra celebration on the part of oklahoma i think sometimes they get carried away with that and in that case in particular i just thought it was albert hall yeah. celebrating I, very spontaneous it's I not like so. he was trying to uh intimidate or, or really trying to humiliate the other team because he scored a touchdown it didn't look like it was orchestrated huh. i don't know well they're trying to keep it a sportsman's type game good sportsmanship but in that case, I just thought Albert Hall was happy to get his first touchdown sure. of the year and celebrating, and he had just cause. Now Scott Blanton on for the extra point. It is good. He is 37 of 37 this year. So Albert Hall puts the Sooners on the scoreboard. The eight-yard touchdown pass from Cale Gundy. And look how they uh, were looking for the back coming out of the backfield. And not bad coverage as they're in the zone back there. I've got to tell you something. Is that a good throw by Cale Gundy in weather conditions like this and he puts it in the middle? You talk about threading the needle. Gundy does his 13th touchdown pass of the year. And with 6.54 to go first quarter, it's 7-0 Oklahoma. On top, 7-0 despite four penalties for 55 yards. Cale Gundy has been spectacular. Three of three through the air for 47 yards. The eight-yard touchdown pass to Albert Hall, and the Sooners have the seven-nothing lead. But now Oklahoma has to kick off from their own 20, thanks to the unsportsmanlike penalty after the celebration on the touchdown. This will give Oklahoma State great field position. A penalty flag comes in, and that's Shannon Culver taking it up to the 42-yard line, but let's see what the penalty is all about. Broderick Simpson made the tackle for Oklahoma. I do believe Andy Loveland's is still gonna come into the ball game, but wouldn't be surprised if we see Tony Jones sometime soon. Well, a scoring drive for Oklahoma, 77 yards. Remember, they had to get by a couple of penalties in that drive as well, 12 plays taking just over four minutes, and Gundy hits the touchdown pass to Albert Hall. Well, Loveland still in there, at quarterback for the Cowboys. Tony Jones, the freshman, and Pat Jones, the coach, and no relation there. Pat saying that when Tony went out with the shoulder injury at the Missouri game, it changed the complexion of the season for the Cowboys. This time the give is to Joe Jefferson and not much room to run for Oklahoma State. Maybe one yard on the play. Now Loveland, a senior, a quiet type. A guy who accepted his backup role without any complaints. He came in when Gary Porter was suspended. Porter is now gone from the Cowboy camp. Loveland had actually won the starting job a year ago in the fall of 1992. And then Porter won it from him about three games into the season. Loveland to throw. Good coverage by Oklahoma. He had a double pump, and he throws it incomplete. Now a penalty flag comes in. I believe it's going to be defensive holding on either John Anderson or one of the defensive backs. No, well, Audrey Beavers is saying, no, it's against Oklahoma State. All right, I give up. I'm not going to speculate <laughs> on these penalties. I've been wrong twice already today. Oh, they got a receiver downfield. An eligible receiver downfield for the Cowboys. Well, Pat Jones, a two-time Big A coach of the year. But uh, because of the probation and because of some of the things they've had to suffer through after the Barry Sanders, Hartley, Dykes, Mike Gundy group left, they've not had a winning year at Oklahoma State since 88. 
Seems like just yesterday, Barry Sanders was winning the Heisman yeah. in Stillwater. Boy, has it been that long ago already? Third down, eight yards to go for the Cowboys. Shuffle pass. Oh. And boy, was Oklahoma there. Man. Russell Allen was right there. And you know what? Russell Allen almost had an interception. And that's what this is. It's a pass. It's not a handoff or a lateral. And watch number 95, the nose guard. The big man slips the center, and he almost intercepts us. Look, he's there the same time the ball is. That's an unbelievable play. So again, it's three and out for the Cowboys. Some quickness for a guy 6'6", 292, Dave. Johnson back at his own 35 as the rain lets up here in Norman. Johnson had that big run back the last time and then called back because of the penalty. Just, uh, some pressure from Oklahoma. Johnson at the 35 again. Breaking it outside. Johnson all the way to the 50 and a flag comes in late. Couple of them. As Johnson goes to midfield, a 15-yard return. 5.14 to go, first quarter. Oklahoma leads it by seven. See at the top of your screen, right there, you see it. And you might wonder, it happens, this is the second time it's happened, why on those kick, especially on punts and kickoffs, why is there so many in the back kind of penalties right. and illegal? Well, a lot of times you're in such open field that when you're a blocker, you're anticipating what that guy's going to do. You say, well, the ball's gonna come up inside me. I anticipate that he's gonna turn to me and I'm gonna time it so I can hit him just as he turns because you want the big hit. You know, if you want the knockout to hit him just as he turns, he doesn't realize you're coming. And what happens if he doesn't turn as you anticipate, what happens is you hit him in the back. Well, this crowd on hand here in Norman, they're able to relax a little bit. The rain has let up. Oklahoma State has had trouble, though, if you're a Cowboy fan. The penalties have stacked up against Oklahoma. That's the only bad news for the Sooners. Oklahoma State, that uh, one penalty against them. The Cowboys are going backwards on offense, a minus four in the offensive category for the Cowboys, and the Sooners are racking up some good totals. Remember last year, Jim, Iowa State upset Nebraska? Mm -hmm. Well, so far today, the Cornhuskers leading 21-0 over Iowa State. A little revenge going on there. I would say so. That went in the first quarter. Well, the Sooners will start at their own 30-yard line. Gundy to throw on first down. Boy, a protection this time. And now Gundy's got room to run. Trying to get out of bounds. Oh, hit hard. Penalty. No flag down. Easily hit him as he was heading out of bounds. is going to do a little dance. No flag. I think the contact came just before Gundy could get out of bounds. Well, we'll see if it does right here. It's obvious that Kale's trying to go out of bounds, and it does come. You're right. That looked worse in live action than it did on the replay. I think it looked worse because Gale kind of relaxed. Kale kind of relaxed, said, uh, I'm going out of bounds. Don't hit me. And Ainsley said, sorry, you're not there yet. I'm going to take you out. <laughs> You linebackers love that, don't Oh, you? sure. Any shot you get at the quarterback, right? <laughs> Second down, nine yards to go. Gundy trying to burn him. Across the middle, he's got Brady. That's a first down. Boy, what a way to come back. I'll tell you one thing about Kale Gundy. I probably the highlight for him is his guts, his determination. Mm -hmm. He came back off that concussion against Colorado and had a great game against Kansas State. And Glenn Mason said he admired not only his talent, but his guts. You're right. Gundy again gets good protection and hits a wide open tight end. Oklahoma State has had problems all year of their linebackers getting back into coverage deep enough. It's created a lot of holes in their secondary. And a guy like Kale Gundy, who makes great decisions, is going to take advantage of that. Gundy has already moved uh, into the number three spot in total offense now in the Big A Conference. So we'll keep an eye, too, on his passing total. And this time to give to Collier. He's got a little bit of room on first down. He 
Gets it across midfield down to the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. Gundy, coming into today, needed 327 yards passing to go into the number three all-time in the Big A charts and 529 in his next two games to go into the number two spot. I think it'd be something for Mike and Cale Gundy to go 1-2 in the Big A conference, all-time total offense and passing. Boy, look at Oklahoma already. Nine first downs, and Oklahoma State has been three and out for them on their first two possessions. There's that play again to Gerald Moore. And Moore gets it down to the 45-yard line. It'll be about three yards shy of the first down. What this play is doing is really taking advantage of the true freshman starting at left defensive end for Oklahoma State, and that's Javon Langford. And he's out there all alone with Harry Stamps Jr., the right tackle for the Sooners on him. He's getting separation, but he's got no help, no pursuit coming because of the misdirection. And it's really a tough thing on that young left end, Javon Langford, for the uh, Oklahoma State Cowboys. And remember, Oklahoma is doing all of this into the wind. And the wind at their backs in the second quarter. Third down, three to go. And a timeout taken by Gundy. So Cale Gundy wants to talk things over with Gary Gibbs. He takes his first timeout of this first half. 3-12 left to go in this first quarter. Oklahoma has the touchdown lead. In Norman, Oklahoma with a 7 nothing lead over Oklahoma State. You know, Jim, the Sooners have not been shut out now for 118 straight games. 1983, the last time a Sooner club was shut out. That's impressive. Well, Cale Gundy and the Oklahoma offense faced with a third and three. And they are clobbering the Cowboys so far and lead 7-0. trying to pick it up himself it's going to be close Keith Burns was one of the first to hit Gundy let's see where they mark the football he needed to get to the 42 yard line they mark it right on the 42 boy is that going to be close gonna have to measure this one I do believe they're going to make a measurement here Boy, even with the ball right on the yard marker, they still couldn't make the determination. A lot of time when you get the uh, chains coming in from the sidelines, it's because the ball isn't right by the yard marker. But even there, they say, we better check this one out. And by half the football, or the nose of the football, Oklahoma moves the chains again. What's been impressive about this, and you see total offense, 180 to minus four in favor of the Sooners. And what's been impressive, Dave, is that the Sooners have been able to methodically go down the field, get a number of first downs, because the Cowboy defense has been very good. Their problem has been giving up the big plays. That's how they lost to Colorado last week, gave up three long touchdowns. Other than that, played very, very well. And the loss to Colorado snapped that 5-0 string, the start for the Sooners, and then a couple of games later, a loss to Kansas State. Last week, Oklahoma led 28 nothing. A little bit of a bad play there for Oklahoma as Burns will make the tackle, but Gundy just lost who he was going to give the ball off to. And he still picked up two yards. That's how right things are going yeah. for Oklahoma. A little confusion here, and I'm Whoops. not sure. Kale didn't think the play was going the other way, so he's just going to make the best of it, but not much going. Not much there. Actually, almost knocked out by his center Chuck Langston oh, Watson Brown able to take the hood off now with the rain stopped here in Norman think he'll be a head coach again probably soon yeah, yeah. of course he was at Vanderbilt and brother Mark is a head coach right now in North Carolina yep have a sneaking suspicion Watson Brown may get a head job uh, head coaching job maybe as early as next year this is the end around of P.J. Mills that's worked well for Oklahoma this year. Mills, that's his third carry of the year on his first two carries. He went 55 yards and even scored a touchdown. Watch Jason Gildon at the top of your screen. He's going to be the one that really disrupts this play. He stays at home, and look who's trying to block him. It's Cale Gundy, who actually threw a pretty good block in a reverse earlier this year. It went for a touchdown, but not this time. Lorenzo Green was the one that really put the big hit on P.J. Mills. So now third and long for the first time today for the Sooners. Third and eight. 
Gundy will throw. It's going to be shy of the first down. The pass is caught right at the 35-yard line by Gerald Moore. Now the crowd here in Norman saying, let's go for it. It's going to bring up a fourth down at about two and a half. And they are. Cale Gundy coming on the field. Well, you're in that position on the field where the ball is at the 34-yard line. Oklahoma State has really done nothing offensively. Yeah. You're being able to move the chains again and again and again. It'd be a very long field goal attempt for Scott Flatton into the win. And on the option, Gundy trying to improvise. Will not have the first down. So the Sooners, who were successful 83% of the time this year on fourth down, do not get it there. Tyler Williams, one of the ones to wrap up Gundy, as he could not pick up the first down. So the ball comes over on downs to the Cowboys. Not that bad of a gamble, as you mentioned, Dave, is even if you don't, if you punt the ball, you might gain about uh, 12 or 13 yards in field position, but... When your defense is playing as well as it is, you might as well take that gamble. As you see, Harry Stamps Jr. down on the field and has not gotten up after that last play. But credit, credit the Oklahoma State uh, Cowboys, their defense, for stopping that option very effectively. A punt, it would have been difficult to keep it out of the end zone. If he goes into the end zone, it comes out to the 20 anyway. So Stamps, uh, let's see if we can see how he got hurt, number 76. He's in the left side of your screen right there, and he's going to get Kale Gundy actually whipped right into his right leg. From that angle, it didn't like, look like anything too serious, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, we've got a new quarterback now for the Cowboys. Tony Jones, the freshman, has returned. And the handoff to the 35-yard line. Boogie Johnson, he goes up to the 35. So Tony Jones, the freshman out of Tulsa, Washington. He was hitting 51% of his passes until he injured his shoulder, a separated shoulder. And he did that in the Missouri game. So he has missed the Iowa State game, the Colorado game, and uh, now back here against Oklahoma. So the first quarter comes to an end. Tony Jones comes over to get some words with Pat Jones. First stanza is in the books, and Oklahoma dominated that first quarter, but they have just a 7-0 lead over the Cowboys. <laughs> University of Oklahoma in Norman, the fall colors absolutely gorgeous in Norman, Oklahoma these days, and the color right now is red for OU. The Sooners had the ball for over 11 minutes in that first quarter and leads 7-0 as we get set to start the second quarter with Duke Fry and Jim Ryan. I'm Dave Armstrong. Tony Jones takes over at quarterback for Oklahoma State. Second and eight. Jones wants to throw. Now we'll tuck it under. This is the dimension that he adds to the Cowboys, although he has basically no gain there. Forced out of bounds by Mario Freeman. Unfortunately, the defenders for the Sooners also have some speed, as you saw. Yeah. <laughs> Mario Freeman just run Tony Jones down and right out of bounds, but Tony wanted to go to his tight end, who was covered. Boy, the Cowboys, a team that was known for his off for its offense in the Gundy, Hartley, Dykes, mm -hmm. Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas days, and now a team that struggles so on offense, averaging just 17 points a game. 97th overall in total offense are the Cowboys. Third and seven. It's been three and out on the first two drives for the Cowboys. Quick drop for Jones. Quick hit. And boy, another quick hit. Culver caught it. William Shankel shook him up. Not a first down for the Cowboys. William Shankel, what a cornerback he is. And they're bringing the blitz. John Anderson coming on a strong safety blitz, which leaves Shankle one-on-one -on -one coverage. And when you can cover one-on-one -on -one like that, you can blitz a lot because that's just outstanding coverage by the right cornerback, number eight, Shankle, the veteran leader of this defensive backfield. They're going to show that one in the uh, film room a lot this mm -hmm. week, aren't they? And Mr. Shankle will be pleased to know that the coaches will be happy about that play. Well, Tyner on to punt for the third time. This one not very good. Out of bounds. And let's see where they mark it. 
They're going to bring it up now as they stop it at the 33-yard line of Oklahoma. Not a good punt at all for Scott Tyner. Just 26 yards into the win. Tyner, who's trying to make all big eight this year. Well, Jones has seen his offense really sputter here today. Three and out for three straight drives for OSU. Pat Jones really wears his emotions on his sleeve, doesn't he? Walks around, and if he's disappointed, you can just see it in the slump of his shoulders. He would be the antithesis but, of Tom Landry, would he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Gundy is getting set to go back on offense with 14.07 to go before the half, leading 7 to nothing are the Sooners. Left to go, second quarter, Harry Stamps Jr. He was shaken up. Duke Fry, what's his status? All right now they're working on that right ankle, taping it. They took the shoe off. They're giving him a new tape job, so it looks like he may be back in the ball game once they get done taping the ankle back up again. But James Allen was picked up and thrown back by Keith Burns and company. No gain there for Allen. Dave, you talk about Keith Burns at the top of the broadcast, and uh, really a semifinalist for the Butkus Award. Got a lot of accolades. One of the best linebackers in the Big Eight. He's had, I think, what you would consider for him after last year, somewhat of a disappointing year. He's not had the big plays that he made last year, having five sacks. He's only got one sack so far this year. Be a high draft pick, though, don't you think? I'm not so sure he's going to be the number one pick that some people are saying. Gundy, forced to tuck it under. He's thrown for a loss. Ainsley, the one to hit him again. Ainsley having an outstanding day so far for the Cowboys. Yeah, he's the one who's really been coming up with more big plays. Had the interception against, uh, against Iowa State. He's going to come on a little a stunt from the inside and actually is picked up very well. And you have to say this is a covered set because Kale Gundy had enough time and then Ainsley's able to just hold the block, hold it, and then come off the block and uh, and make the tackle for the uh, sack. So third and 13 for Oklahoma. Receivers both come out wide to the right. Dundee given time, fires it across the middle and almost picked off. He was looking for Albert Hall, and Ainsley almost had his second interception of the year. He's crying about the fact that he didn't hold on. We said that Oklahoma State has not been very good in their zone drops from their linebackers. Well, this time they are. Nice read by Ainsley. He's just watching Cale Gundy's eyes, and he has no idea where the receiver is behind him, but he's just watching the quarterback eyes and able to read it. You see Cale Gundy saying, oh, whoa, I got away with that one. Ainsley making a bid for Defensive Player of the Week. He already has six tackles, a quarterback sack, and that pass broken up. Back deep to get it is Scott Harmon. Blanton punts for the first time with the wind in his back. And he backs Harmon up to his own 25. Good move by Harmon, though, and he gets out of bounds to the 35-yard line. And a penalty flag comes in. A return of 10 yards after a punt of 44 yards. Are going to say he shoved him out of bounds, maybe? And another illegal block. This time the penalty against the Cowboys. Maybe one punt that has not had a penalty so far. <laughs> You're right. We've had a couple of nice returns, too. Yeah. Maybe because of those blocks from behind. So Tony Jones, a guy that adds that dimension of speed to the offense for the Cowboys. Cowboys were having a very successful start at three and one. The Cowboys. Went into that Nebraska game with high hopes and really had the Huskers on the ropes for a while in that game. And boy, it's unraveled now in the Big 8 season for OSU. 0-5 in the conference. And to give this time to Boogie Johnson. Fumble the football and out of bounds. So it will stay with Oklahoma State. 
as it goes out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Well, I'm not really sure what the Cowboys are trying to do. They came out, no tight ends. They got two wide receivers. You think they're going to throw the ball, but then they give it to Boogie Johnson. But they got seven men up on the line of scrimmage, only six guys to block him, including the back. And that's not really good numbers for the Cowboys. And that shows in the nice hit, and the ball goes out of bounds. Lucky for the Cowboys that the ball does go out of bounds. And Freeman couldn't catch up with it. Malin Wesley was the one that put the helmet on the ball and forced it loose. So a gain of two on that. It's second and eight. This time they give us to Joe Jefferson. And again, not much room. Boy, Oklahoma's defense has come up large so far in this contest. James makes the play. Cedric Jones, the sophomore. Well, the, the defense is not really what's got all the accolades here in Norman. The offense has really been the catalyst, I think, for the Sooners, but their defense has proved to be adequate all year, and what they're doing is they're playing against a, an Oklahoma State offense that really is not very good this year. They, I mean, you have to be honest and say that, and right now they've, they're, they're trying to run the football against a front seven when you only have six guys to block them. And Tony Jones calls timeout on third and six. So we have 11.30 before the intermission. It's still Oklahoma 7, Oklahoma State. Go back to work facing a third and six at their own 26-yard line. They need to get to the 32. I'm going to give this to Thompson. He will not have the first down. Stopped at the 30-yard line as we get down to Duke Fry. Thanks, Dave. Well, it looks like Harry Stamps will be back in on the next possession for Oklahoma. He was up and walking around after the tape job on his ankle. You know, as I've been watching the Cowboys, one thing that I've been thinking is that with Tony Jones in the lineup, they've got a little more mobility back there. And on this turf, with the way the weather's been, maybe that'll help them offensively. But their line has been overpowered, both on the offensive and defensive side so far. And I think that's been the real difference of the ball game. The OU line has really manhandled Oklahoma State to this point in the ball game. Duke that up, it looks a little like Carmen Santiago, you know, going in search of... Carmen San Diego or whatever that is. <laughs> Computer game. <laughs> and Johnson calls for the fair catch in his own 29-yard line. Well, a punt of 40 yards that time from Scott Tyner into the win. A good punt from Tyner. No oh, Gundy. So far today, uh, Gundy has gotten this offense moving. Uh, surprising, though, the Sooners still have just seven points in the game. Yeah, the... Uh, the Cowboys have done a good job of at least stopping the big plays, and they've only allowed the Sooners in the end zone once. And as much as the Sooners have dominated this game, you have to look at the Cowboys, and they're on the sideline saying, hey, we're only one big play, one score away from tying this thing up. Cowboys without a first down yet today. And to give us to Moore. Moore almost fumbled the football, hit by Burns. Keith Burns, who last year picked up an extra point attempt, ran the distance for the two-point conversion. And it was big because Oklahoma State tied the game at 15. Keith Burns does a good job of just scraping, and that is coming off the block of number 62, Broderick Robertson, and it just comes right through and makes the tackle. And that's what he did a lot last year. He did it, showed flashes of it against Colorado a week ago, but they were really kind of disappointed in Keith Burns and his play up to that point in the season. Remember we were saying that uh, Oklahoma was running to the right side a lot. That might be a good reason with Burns set on the other side. Now Burns sets up on the right side, and they give this to Brady. Brady breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. To the 50-yard line goes Brady. Charles Werner finally brought him down. Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator for OU, told me yesterday that what you do against a defense that's real quick, real fast, and a good pursuer is you do a lot of misdirection and a lot of delays. And here's the delay, and it's wide open to Brady, and he's got all green because of the great pursuit of Oklahoma State. They see something, they go after it. They're not real disciplined at staying at home, and that lends itself to the delay patterns that you see Oklahoma using there. Boy, Brady has been the favorite target of K.L. Gundy of late. Came in with 31 catches, and uh, Brady adds another one to that total. And there's that misdirection to Allen. Lots of room and a good block on the outside. 
Good blocking by Corey Warren on the outside, and James Allen goes out of bounds all the way down to the Oklahoma State 30, a gain of 20. Again, undisciplined on the on the Oklahoma State Cowboy defense, and that's that misdirection play, and you see Allen just take it to his left. He gets a good block right there from his tight end, Brady, and then, as you mentioned, Dave, good downfield blocking by his wide receiver, Warren. So a gain of 20 more. Allen now with 41 yards on the ground. And Gerald Moore over 50 yards on the ground. So those two guys have combined for over 100. How about that? Oklahoma with 12 first downs. Oklahoma State does not have one. Allen takes it up the gut. Or no, excuse me, that's Terry Collier. He takes it up the gut for a gain of just a couple. And making the stop, Jason Gilden. Gilden, another high draft pick, wouldn't you think? I, I think that he has a possibility of going even higher than Burns. I think he's that good. He was all Big 8 a couple different years. Probably will be all Big 8 again. He broke the uh, Oklahoma State sack record for career. He broke the record of one Leslie O'Neill. Not a bad player. He's got all the tools. Very quick. Not necessarily all that big. Might have to uh, put a little weight on to play professional football effectively. Yeah, he's only 240 pounds, that pro. Second down, eight yards to go for Oklahoma. Gundy throws the screen pass incomplete. That one was poorly set up and well defensed by the Cowboys. Gundy now six of eight for 90 yards. Looks like uh, the Cowboys are going to try to blitz. You see Link Harden coming up, and he's picked up very effectively. As a matter of fact, goes down to one knee. And Gundy really was not pressured all that much, but threw the ball kind of backing up and didn't have enough on it to make the completion. So third and eight now for Oklahoma. Gundy has just thrown four interceptions all year. Oh, that's amazing. He has had streaks of 74 and 99 straight passes without an interception. One picked off last week. There's been some movement there by Oklahoma. No flag. And he throws it up into the end zone. Who's got it? Touchdown, Albert Hall. His second of the day. Wow. What a catch by Hall. Did you mention Kale Gundy? The fact that he's only thrown four interceptions, he makes great decisions. I'm not so sure this one was a great decision because Albert Hall is covered, and as a matter of fact, double covered. But Kale says, I'm going to try to get it in there. He just heaves this thing into the right corner, and look at the catch by Albert Hall. I'm not so sure. You know, he didn't really catch that out of the air. He kind of batted it back into his stomach and was able to hold on. So Hall, who had not had a touchdown reception all year, comes up with his second of the day. Gundy now with 14 touchdown passes. Scott Blanton adds the extra point, and it's 14-0 Oklahoma. You know, Gundy, though, he throws this ball where only one guy yeah. can catch it, Albert Hall. Yeah, he really does. Trent Fisher has good coverage, and Scott, uh, Charles Verner is there. But Hall is the one who comes up with the football. So Hall, with no touchdown catches all year, with two today. And both of them, Gundy, threads the needle. And, and what the Cowboys were victimized by last week, the same thing they are victimized by this week, and that's outstanding catches. Last week, it was Charles Johnson making two unbelievable catches, one for 26 yards, one for 54 yards, that really propelled CU and the Colorado Buffs to the victory over the Cowboys. And this week, it's Albert Hall. So two weeks in a row, the Cowboys victimized by great receivers. Boy, Hall uh, got a lot of good catches there, and Gundy with... Seven of nine through the air today for 120 yards and two touchdown passes. So Gundy already off to a huge day against his brother's club, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Albert Hall had four touchdowns a year ago, and they thought he was a real big play man. And as you mentioned, comes into this game with no touchdowns. And he's the one who said, I'd like to catch the last touchdown, score the last points on Owen Field before they rip up this turf, I think, so go down in history. <laughs> and by the way, no penalty for unsportsmanlike contact on the celebration <laughs> after that last touchdown. 
Blanton kicking off. This one well through the end zone. You know, Blanton now has kicked off 64 times and only 20 Five have been returned all year. Unbelievable. Blanton has the big leg. Now Tony Jones, he's got to try to bring his Cowboys back down 14-0 with 8.25 to go in the second quarter. Well, so far, Tony Jones has really just handed the ball off, tried to run himself a little bit. They've been, it appears, a little reluctant to have him throw the ball, but now down by 14, 8.25 to go in the half. I think they're going to have to put it up a few times anyway. Oop. Lots of movement. Lots of contact, lots of flags. Right tackle for Oklahoma State, Mike Butler, firing off the line of scrimmage. You know, as a defender, we'll wait for the call. Big ball foul, false start on the offense, first down. Well, back him up five yards, first and 15. That's all the Cowboys needed. The Sooners go 71 yards on six plays. They'll take just over two minutes on that drive, and... Gundy with a 28-yard touchdown pass to Hall. And give to Jefferson. A flag comes flying into the fray. Let's see what that's about. 14-0 here, Oklahoma. It's in the area where they'd be holding. Hey, we got one right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this Cowboy team uh, really struggled offensively. The way this Oklahoma State team started, though, Jim, who would have thought they'd be 0-5 in the conference at this point? Yeah, they started the year 3-1. They played very well against Nebraska. Actually, were ahead in the ball game deep into the third quarter before they got a punt block, and then Nebraska scored a late touchdown to beat them. But then they went to Missouri, and they just didn't show up at that game. Mm -hmm. Pat Jones said, we just didn't play. We didn't even show up. And, and that's the game that was really the turnaround part, uh, the turnaround game in this season. And uh, losing to Iowa State by three. A missed field goal in the last second. Tony Jones throwing it downfield and well short of his intended receiver, Rafael Denson. Boy, Denson was at least five, eight yards beyond where the throw landed. I'm not sure, so sure Tony Jones didn't think he was going to come back to that ball. Sometimes a quarterback will almost purposefully underthrow a guy because if he's very well covered, the receiver's looking back and he can see the ball's been underthrown. And a lot of times you'll get a flag, you'll get a pass interference call. But that one was so underthrown that I'm not sure what Tony Jones was thinking. So well, now the Cowboys, who have not picked up a first down today, are faced with a third and 15. And movement. A lot of the Sooners jump, which give you the indication probably some of the Cowboys were moving as well. It wasn't just one guy from Oklahoma well, the center, jumping offside. The center should never not know the snap count. <laughs> He's the key guy, <laughs> and I think in this case, the center did not know. Dead ball foul, false start on the offense, third down. Man, Cowboys are being lassoed right now here in Norman, aren't they? Looked like everybody on the offensive line jumped. Tony Jones was expecting the snap, but Scott Hall, the center, just stood there. Or squatted there, so to speak. Yeah, the last time Oklahoma State won a game against Oklahoma, 1976. Did we mention who the quarterback was? Uh, well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be proper for me to do it, but maybe perhaps you. <laughs> well, one of our partners here on the Big 8 game of the week, Dean Blevin, is quarterbacking. We'll have to get an explanation from him next week at Kansas. And again, it's three and out for the Cowboys. Ricky ran in there to stop Tony Jones from going any further. This is a lot for a true freshman. As we mentioned in the open, Dave, coming off the injury, coming back onto the field and, and trying to direct an offense that has been very, very poor through the last three games without him. And Tony Jones, I, I don't think he really, as a true freshman, is able to see everything. He had a receiver open. He just couldn't find him. And that's not unusual for a freshman who tried, he sees a lot of things coming at him. Boy, Tyner already on for his fifth punt of the day. We're not even to halftime, folks. A lot of pressure coming. And a flag comes down. Tyner was hit after the kick. And it lands at the 40. I think they're going to have roughing the kicker here. Yeah. The Sooners were coming hard. And Scott Tyner went down after the punt. 
And that is going to be a penalty against Oklahoma. Watch it. I think it's going to be Anderson who's coming in. And, yeah, there he is. It's not going to be a running into. I think that's going to be a roughing. That'll give him the automatic first down. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. First down. Well, the first first down for the Cowboys, and they got it the hard way. John Anderson is starting strong safety. The former walk-on is going to see that he can't get it, or actually tries to get it, and then just roughs up. Scott Tyner, the punter. See, if you just run into him almost accidentally, it's only going to be the five-yard penalty. But when you're trying to block it, you miss it, and you nail the kicker, you're going to get the personal foul. And that's what happens in this case. Well, the Cowboys get it back at their own 28-yard line. And trying to break outside and uh, might have a face mask here. As trying to break outside there is David Thompson. And, uh, Larry Bush might have been grabbing some of that face mask. We saw David Thompson have just an outstanding day against Kansas a few weeks ago. Another true freshman. 392 yards on the year. Five yards, face mask at the end of the run. First down. Terry Turlington, uh, referee, getting a workout today. They're going to have to change the batteries in his microphone at halftime. Oh, they almost could have called it both ways. As trying to give the uh, stiff arm, David Thompson actually puts his hand in the face of William Shankle. That's the seventh penalty now against Oklahoma for 90 yards in penalties against the Sooners. Look at that. So first down and just three yards to go now for Oklahoma State. And Jones wants to throw and is sacked. Big play there by David Campbell. So instead of a second and short situation, all of a sudden the Cowboys really shooting themselves in the foot here. It's going to be second down and 13. And number 59, David Campbell, just comes right through the right tackle, Matt Jose, and who breaks in, and the big bulky one, six foot, 281 pounds, but surprisingly quick and strong for that type of body type. I was just about to say the Cowboys were the first and three. Ought to be able to pick up a first down here, but now I'm not so sure it's second and 13. This time Jones giving a time, and it's picked off. That one is intercepted. Darius Johnson, I believe. Darius Johnson with his fourth interception of the year. I think Tony Jones has to be saying, are they playing with 13, 14, 15 guys out there? Because I have guys in my face. I have no one open. And this type of time tries to force the ball in there. And he's really got no chance to complete that pass. Both Anderson and Johnson are there. Johnson's the one who comes up with the interception. Well, the first turnover for the Cowboys, and Oklahoma with a 14-0 lead has it at the Cowboy 29. That time to give to Chandler. And he picks up about two yards on first down. Boy, Oklahoma, they have been opportunistic on defense. That is their 16th interception as a team this year. They have plus 13, first in the Big 8, plus 13 in turnover margin. Well, when you have a quarterback like Gundy who has thrown just four interceptions and you've not put the ball on the carpet that much, as far as fumbles are concerned, that will help you as well. Yeah, the only time they really had a problem with turnovers was against Kansas State. They lost three. They fumbled the ball eight times yeah. against the Wildcats. They lost three of them. Really had a lot of problems with the center exchange with Langston out of that game for Oklahoma that day. Second and eight. And there's the misdirection to Allen. Trying to bust it outside. It's about four yards, but a nice tackle in there by Clavon Williams. And that's what the Cowboys are going to need on that misdirection play. Good tackling by their backside corner because what they're doing is they're leaving 
their end, whether it's the right end or left end, whichever way they run the misdirection, kind of on an island. They have a blocker out there. It's really been a tough play for the Cowboys to defend. They need better pursuit from the defensive backfield. Now the Sooners here going for the knockout blow. You see Allen already with 43 yards on the ground. The Sooners leading at 14 nothing. 4.40 to go before the intermission. Oklahoma has won eight straight against Oklahoma State here in Norman. And some movement, and Gundy goes down. The ball was snapped quickly by Langston. Langston saw the movement by yeah. the Cowboys and tried to get the ball to Gundy quickly. Let's see if they're going to whistle this against them. Yeah, it was a good play by Langston, wasn't it, the sophomore? Gibbs calls Langston a throwback to the old days. He'll play with pain. And Langston there, wise and seeing the movement. Langston, whoops, saying, all right, I'm going to get it to Kale. Kale obviously not expecting it. Yeah. And Langston snaps it quickly. It, it was Eric outside. Hobbs. You couldn't see it in your screen, but at the bottom of the screen, Eric Hobbs, a linebacker, was in a three-point stance. He was coming on the blitz, jumped a little early, and Langston makes the heads-up play and gets a, a free five yards. And now they're going to have to measure, I believe. That's close to a first down. Here we go, the fifth penalty against the Cowboys. Twelve penalties already in this contest. And they're going to say it's just shy of the first down marker. So third and inches. And Pat has not had a good record against these Sooners. But who has in the history of Cowboy coaches? And when one team has won 69 games and lost just 11, I can't imagine any Cowboy coaches with a winning record. And he will take it on the quarterback sneak for the first down inside the 20. He'll fall forward to the 17-yard line. Dundee has thrown two touchdown passes today, both to Albert Hall, one of eight yards and one of 28 yards. And Gundy looking for a towel to wipe off. Now, Gundy still needs, uh, coming into today, over 500 yards passing in his last two games to go into the number two all-time slot in total passing in the Big A Conference. He may just do it. We'll see. James Allen, not much on first down. Down to the 16. And Burns again there along with Ainsley. And Ainsley, he's having a big day. And uh, he's celebrating a lot, too. Looks like it? he's trash-talking a little bit down there, too. You know, when you're down 14 nothing, it's a little more difficult to do some trash talking. But when you're having a game like Ainsley, maybe you can do it a little bit. Well, you Ainsley. forget the scoreboard a little bit, too. When he, he, Right now, he's thinking his club's in the lead the way he's playing. <laughs> he's playing hard. That's what you like to see, a team that may be down the, out of the Big 8 race. They have an 0-5 record in the Big 8. But are your guys still playing hard? Do you have some character? And the draw play to Chandler. Big hole up the middle. That should be a first down to the seven. Ainsley finally makes the stop. Watson, Brown, and his troops have a game plan that is working to perfection with all the misdirection. Look at the size of the hole as the pursuit finally catches up, but about, what, eight yards down the field. I don't know if I'd ever want to be an umpire. Those umpires, Ron Johnson there from Wichita, they're right in the middle of that action. Man, with all those big bodies of flying. <laughs> I was playing inside linebacker. I, I was always telling them to get out of the way because they always seem to be right in a position, you know, right over your left shoulder. You can almost hear them breathing, you know. And, and we know this is on tape delay. And so this is a score you've got to report, even though it's in the second quarter as we're seeing this. 21-7, Notre Dame over Florida State. Did I tell you, Dave? <laughs> no, you didn't, as a matter of fact. I thought I did. I don't remember you saying anything about that. I, I, I picked Notre Dame. Well, good for you. That's not over. Either. First and goal from the seven. No, it's not. At least it's worth saying. Allen busts outside. Down to the three-yard line goes James Allen. Allen, despite over 130 carries this year, has just one touchdown rushing. Normally, when the 
Sooners get it this close, they go to either Collier or Chandler. Both of those guys each scored two touchdowns last week against Missouri. Watch number 44, Keith Burns, the linebacker, is going to come in, and then he chooses a side. He thinks that Allen's going inside, and he kind of shuffs up or, or comes and uses his shoulder on his outside shoulder and gets caught inside. He has to hand fight that and really play kind of a two-gap technique. Second and goal it. at the three. That's Allen in motion. And the give is to Chandler. Touchdown! Chandler with his eighth touchdown of the year. Boy, Oklahoma has punched a big hole in this game now. Mm -hmm. The big fullback for, from Aberdeen, Mississippi. And there's Burns gets the hit on him at about the one and a half, maybe two yard line. But Chandler at six foot two twelve is able to drag Burns into the end zone for the third point after of the day. He's now 39 of 39 this year. Chandler talking things over with Gibbs saying, Hey, congratulations, young man. Your eighth touchdown of the year. 158 to go before the break. And Chandler has given Oklahoma. A 21 to nothing lead over their cross state rival Calvary with the touchdown. Oklahoma, they capitalize on the turnover. The Sooners have done a good job of capitalizing on their opponents' mistakes this year. And again, that one goes through the end zone by Scott Blanton. And the Sooners convert the interception by Darius Johnson and take it in for the score to lead 21 to nothing. Hey, there's a hat for you, Jim. Maybe we got to get that down to Duke Fry. <laughs> What is that? Uh, the court little, jester. Yeah, jester hat. <laughs> well, this one's turned into a laugher, hasn't it? The Sooners leading 21-0. But we remind you that the Sooners had a 28-0 lead on Missouri last week, and the Tigers came storming back. Storming back. And right now, this Oklahoma defense is not giving the Cowboys any room to breathe as Thompson is thrown for a loss. And Oklahoma just 29 yards. They play the short field. And they do it in four minutes. Chandler with a three-yard touchdown run, 21-0 OU. Jones now runs out of trouble. Throws it and a one-hopper incomplete. So it's third and 11 now for the Cowboys. See Tony Jones there, and boy, it's been a rough afternoon already for him. There's 121. To, they're just trying to run out this clock, let alone even get a first down. He's just one of seven passing. Actually, both quarterbacks combined, one of seven passing, one yard, one interception. That's the quarterbacks for Oklahoma State. Here's their penalty yards. They're good for Oklahoma State, but a regular offense, just six yards. Add maybe one more to it right there. Well, that is unbelievable. The Cowboys, and now Oklahoma's going to call a timeout. They want the ball back with sure. 110 to go. Going for the knockout punch. Mario Freeman makes the stop there. You know, Oklahoma has forced 26 turnovers now this year. Of course, the interception on the last drive by the Cowboys. And after that, the Sooners have scored 14 out of those 26 turnovers. 14 times the Sooners have capitalized. Pat Jones, uh, what's he going to say in the locker room at halftime? This club's already down 21 nothing. It could be more. Here you see the comparison of these squads. Uh, rushing yards, boy, that's well down for Oklahoma State. Passing mm -hmm. the balanced attack for Oklahoma, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, and that's what uh, they've tried to do. And Watson Brown trying to bring back a little bit more option here, and he wants to have the threat of both the run and the pass here. And I'm sure that's what Oklahoma State would like to have too, but they just don't have the horses up front to get it done, at least not today. And Tyner on, what's this, his sixth punt of the day, I believe? Sixth punt for well, Tyner. The, the biggest gain of the day for Oklahoma State might have been the roughing that he got. That's right. It was. He got a 15-yard penalty. It was. And there's Johnson who had a run back, called back earlier. Big one. And man up for the Sooners right now. And they do not give the big pressure. Johnson coming in at the 45. Hit at the 50. Still on his feet. 
And Johnson inside Oklahoma State territory, down to the 43. So the Sooners, with one timeout remaining, have one minute to go before halftime. Darius Johnson, not known as a great punt returner, only an eight-yard average coming in, but look at the balance as he's hit once, twice, and then makes some extra yardage after contact, and really should have been a no-game or even a minus-one return, and he turns it into positive yardage. So Gundy has some time now, one minute to go, and he has just 43 yards to the end zone. Play action, Gundy throws, complete, Allen, he's tripped up. Nice play there defensively by Burns. He keeps the clock moving. The Sooners are going to have to hurry. Remember, Oklahoma has just one timeout remaining. Trying realistically, the Sooners are, to get at least in field goal range with the wind at their back. They're only about 10 yards away from that. Maybe not even that. Yeah. Gundy is trying to avoid the sack now. will throw it away. That stops the clock with 29 seconds to go to the break. Well, where the ball is now, it would be about a 53, 54-yard field goal. Blanton's longest this year, 52. Mm -hmm. They say he has a range of up to 60 yards, they think. Gundy now 7 of 11, 124 yards. Pretty good half. Not bad, yeah. A couple of touchdowns. Tacked onto that. Gundy was mad at himself last week after the Missouri game, said he has the worst game of the year. Screen pass. And out of bounds goes Chandler, or that's Collier. Collier going out of bounds. And I think he has the first down. He does, where they mark it at the 30-yard line. Stops the clock with 23 seconds to go. Definitely field goal range now for Blanton. And I think they're just playing for the field goal. They're not trying to move the, the ball downfield, not trying to throw into the end zone. Although with 23 seconds right now, they're in field goal range. They might try to get it in the end zone and say, hey, if we can, we'll take our chances with a field goal. And Gundy's numbers today. Gundy has time, throws it up deep. Brady's knocked out of bounds and incomplete. Ricky Brady saying, wait a minute, I was shoved out of bounds. Well, even if he was by Eric Hobbs, the linebacker, and you notice the linebacker covering the tight end all the way downfield on the sideline, but even if he was, that ball was not even catchable. The ball was thrown way out of bounds, and I think the officials make the right call by really making no call. I agree. Brady thought he had a case, uh, saying I could have made the catch coming back for the ball, but again, in the uh, view of the back judge, Thought that that was an uncatchable ball. So second down and 10. And 17 seconds to go. And the give is to Collier. Lots of room for Collier. Still on his feet. Busting tackles all the way down to the 10-yard line. Now they'll stop the clock long enough to set the chains. Oklahoma can call a timeout here if they want to, and they have. Keith Burns, I believe, is hurt. He's not getting up, or actually now he's getting up very, very slowly. So watch this hit see. Collier puts on right here. Boom, look at the contact. There was Scott Harmon. Well, Harmon makes the mistake of not wrapping up. A lot of times those defensive backs will come in, they're just going to try to knock you out. But what you have to do is wrap your arms around to make the tackle. Once again, Keith Burns kind of choosing the inside and gets his outside shoulder pinned inside. And Boy, what running, even knocking his own guys out of the way yeah, is Corey Collier. Warren. Corey Warren got in the way. Hey, huh? he just, he doesn't care what color jersey you are. Just get out of the way. I'm going to the goal <laughs> line, bud. Look at that day for a fullback. <laughs> a fullback. Three rushes, 26 yards. And Burns hobbles over to the sideline. I'm trying to get a report for you on that from Duke Fry. Nine seconds to go. The Sooners are out of timeouts. They have a first down right at the 10-yard line. So Gundy will try to take maybe one, maybe two cracks into the end zone. Mm -hmm. No, I think you only got have one. You have one. I, I don't. I don't think you can risk trying to get two. You I, get one I, crack here and then get your field goal. Nine seconds. Field. Yeah, you probably be really tough to get two plays unless they were very, very quick. And you have to if you're Gundy. Think we can't do something that's complete at the two-yard line that's not out of bounds. Right. Because you wouldn't have time it. to get it. You have to get it into the end zone or throw it incomplete. 
mean, if you complete it at the two, you ha he has to be so wide open that you can see he's going to walk in. There you go. More go out of bounds. Throw it up into the corner, and a penalty. That one might go against Brady. Brady was pushing off over there on the end zone. It might be against him. It could be against the defender. Let's see. I, I think Link Harden just tried to tackle him. Brady's saying, what's up with that? Number 57, the linebacker for the Cowboys, was all over Brady. There are but four as you say, it, it, right now. It, may, it may be that Brady was pushing off first, and they can't decide which way this one should go. And I definitely saw Brady with a shove. It might have come the other way. Now it's against the Cowboys, so obviously Brady was just retaliating for the shoves he was taking. Holding on the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down right, on the forward you do? You pass kick across the, field the line goal, right? yeah, four seconds to go actually it becomes a great oh. play for the cowboys they stopped the touchdown anyway yeah sure did you know, pat jones uh, he said well we stopped any kind of a play for brady to get it in for the touchdown and now the, the five yards is really inconsequential for blanton who will kick the field goal and does his tenth of the year and the sooners end the first half on a high note it was all Oklahoma in that first half. And I don't mean the state of Oklahoma. It was all Sooners. 24 to nothing. Oklahoma has the lead over their cross-state rival Cowboys. The Sooners all over it statistically on the scoreboard. And Oklahoma leads it 24 to nothing as we get down to Duke Fry. Well, thanks, Dave. Well, the Oklahoma Ball Club heads off the field up by 24 points the real key of the ball game in my mind has been the way they've played along the offensive and defensive line gundy has had all sorts of time when he's been back there to pass to scan the defense look for the guy that's open and then connect on the passes and then they've opened up the offense a little bit as well they've run some razzle dazzle plays it's worked very well watson brown with his offensive scheme has worked an offense that is going very strongly against an Oklahoma State defense that's not too bad, but when they have to stay out on the field the entire first half, it's just worn them down. Boy, it really has. Uh, fortunately, the rain has pretty much stayed away from Norman today, but the Sooners outgaining Oklahoma State 314-9 in total yards in that first half. Wow. Oklahoma all over the Cowboys. 24-0 at the half. This has got to be Norman, fall colors is absolutely spectacular right now. Fall came late to Oklahoma this year because of the warm weather. And well, I'll tell you, the Sooners have fallen hard on the Cowboys. Gary Gibbs, his club up 24-0 at the intermission. And it has not only been a 24-0 lead for Oklahoma, but they have dominated, dominated this contest. Oklahoma will be kicking off. Oklahoma State back deep. At the goal line, Raphael Denson, along with Scott Harmon, back deep for the Cowboys. And Scott Blanton will be kicking with the wind at his back. With Duke Fry and Jim Ryan, I'm Dave Armstrong. On hand in Norman, Oklahoma, the 17th-ranked Sooners are waylaying the Cowboys. And the Cowboys, as you know, Dave, not a second-half team. They've only scored, uh, I think it's 31 points in the second half, only seven points in the fourth quarter. They finally got their first four, fourth quarter points against the Buffaloes of Colorado just last week. And Pat Jones saying he heard the jeers or cheers, whatever you want to call it, from the crowd in Stillwater after the touchdown, and he said, I haven't really paid much attention to that. As Blanton kicks it about seven yards deep, they'll down it there, and the Cowboys will start offense at their own 20-yard line. The Cowboys have not been in Oklahoma territory all day today. You see Jones, just two of seven. He has thrown one interception, and he has uh, two completed passes for just one yard. Well, he's the quarterback of the future, and that's yeah. why he's in the ball game. Pat Jones is going to look to Tony Jones to lead the Cowboys into the next few years, I'm sure. The fear of uh, Pat Jones was that Tony Jones might re-injure himself. The, the worst thing the Cowboys wanted was for Tony Jones to have any kind of a lingering thing that might not even go on into next year, but they've gotten the okay that that will not happen. And it's uh, Jones on the pitch out. 
anything. Mario Freeman is right there. So Oklahoma comes out. They're ready to play again. And a gain of just one yard on the play. So Oklahoma State, Jim, trying something a little bit different, coming out with the option. And that's what Jones can lend to you. But when you have defenders like Aubrey Beavers, who actually, you saw Freeman run the uh, ball carrier out of bounds, but it was Beavers who played off a block and made the pitch occur. And we haven't called his name a whole lot, but Aubrey Beavers, an outstanding linebacker for OU. It's Jefferson in motion. And the pitch is to Thompson. He stopped after a one-yard loss. John Anderson coming up to make the stop. You know, Oklahoma is not respecting the pass no, at all right that's now. That's a good point. I was just going to say that they're just bringing eight men up to the line of scrimmage, and they're saying, go ahead, try to throw the football. We know that we can defend it. We don't think you can throw the football, and we don't think you can run it when we have eight men up on the line of scrimmage. So it's third and ten again. David Thompson just seven, oh boy, 12 this is, yards on seven carries. This is adding more to the problems for the Cowboys. Jones, seeing the play clock wind down, takes a timeout. So things still unraveling for the Cowboys in Norman today. Their own 20-yard line, third down, 10 yards to go for the Cowboys. 14-14 to go, as you see. We're just the start of things here in the second half of play. 24-0 Oklahoma. Tony Jones needs to do something to try to spark this offense, some kind of big play, long play, and, and maybe just one huge play, whether it be run, pass, whatever, would get them untracked, but they've come up very short. I mean, really nothing offensively so far. And you see what they've done on third down today. The first downs for the Cowboys have come on penalties. Again, not enough for the first down as David Thompson gains six yards after the 26, but that's it. So Scott Tyner, the busiest of all Cowboys, will come on to punt again. And P.J. Mills goes back deep for the Sooners. Johnson, the normal return man for the Sooners. Now P.J. Mills will get a crack at it here in the second half. And 10 men up on the line for Oklahoma. And almost a block. Mills takes it at his own 38. And hit at the 45 and dropped at the 47-yard line. So the Sooners come back on the attack, leading 24 to nothing. Dale Gundy, a good first half for the senior quarterback out of Midwest City. Look at those numbers. 9 of 13, that is efficient. Yeah, but with only 131 yards and they're so far ahead, they're not going to be throwing the ball a whole lot. He's not going to be able to move up those big eight charts in total offense and passing. He needs, he's trying to catch. He wants to be number two behind his brother. And remember, the next game for Oklahoma, the Nebraska Cornhusker. Mm -hmm. That's going to make it even tougher, and that one will be played at Nebraska a day after Thanksgiving. We start talking bowl possibilities for Oklahoma. They're going to a bowl game, which one is still to be decided. And on first down, not much doing for Gerald Moore. Tyler Williams. The consensus is that it'll be either be the Copper Bowl or the Aloha Bowl for the Sooners. And there was a column in the Tulsa World today that said they are trying in the Aloha Bowl, uh, despite all the coalition reports, that uh, they're trying for an Oklahoma-Michigan matchup in the Aloha Bowl on Christmas Day. Well, the Aloha Bowl would rather have Oklahoma, apparently, than Kansas State. They're saying, well, we had Kansas last year. A lot of people over there don't know that that's two different schools. Right. I think they know. <laughs> well, I do, too. They try the misdirection again, and Oklahoma State, I think they made an adjustment yep. in the locker room. Gerald Moore gets a couple of yards. You're exactly right. Levon Dave. Williams. Excuse me, Dave, you're exactly right. Javon Langford's the one who really stayed at home and made the ball carrier cut back into the inside, and there he had some help from his friends, a little pursuit, and that's what happens in the second half when you get burned by a play. They try to run at the first series in the second half. You've made an adjustment. Say, okay, we've seen this. Now we know what we're going to do. 
Oklahoma State bringing a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage the last few plays, expecting the run from the Sooners. And now third and eight for Gundy and company. Gundy fakes one way, goes down the middle. Isn't enough for the first down, though? Uh -huh. I don't think so. Brady, he caught it, but he was about a yard shy at the 45-yard line. Now fourth down, Oklahoma saying, let's go for it. Why not? But they're not going to. Ricky Brady, the latest in a long line of great tight ends to come out of Oklahoma. And there, the senior makes kind of a freshman mistake in not getting enough of it into his pattern to make sure that he had the first down when he caught the football. So Blanton on to punt. This is just his second punt of the day. Who's in high? Gonna hit at the 10. Oklahoma's gonna cover this one. And a good bounce for OU and Scott Blanton. It rolls out of bounds at the seven yard line. Well, that's all the Cowboys needed. A punt of 38 yards, but more importantly, it pins Oklahoma State back at their own seven. Got a nice backspin on it, kind of like one of your wedge shots. Huh, <laughs> yeah, one that rolled right off the green <laughs> and out of bounds into the bunker. <laughs> Just like it. So Jones, as you mentioned, trying to spark this offense now. And I guess this offense, in a word, lifeless. Pat Jones a little frustrated, too, saying you know, they have a defense that he thinks is as good as they had in the mid-80s when they were winning a lot of ball games here. He says, our defense is that good, but our offense really has been poor. I mean, he's very candid in his comments about his own football team. Can you imagine how good this Oklahoma State team would have been for Pat Jones with the Barry Sanders, Hartley Dykes, Mike Gundy offense and this defense? Mm. Would that have been a team? Well, 11.07 to go here in the third quarter. 24-0 Oklahoma. Oklahoma State goes back on the attack at their own seven. Jones and gets it up to the 10-yard line and a busted play. That's probably as disappointing as anything to Pat Jones is not that his offense is not executing and marching down the field, but they look like they're in disarray. They had a timeout a little bit earlier. Now they have a, a, a busted play, as you say, a broken play. And, and I guess that's to be expected from a true freshman, but Tony Jones did start three ball games, played in a couple others. He's not without experience completely. Yeah, but he is a little bit rusty. You've got to figure on that, and being a freshman, it makes you even rustier. Second and seven for the Cowboys. And they give this to Thompson. Again, no gain. Boy, that Oklahoma defense is swarming today. Big hit in there by David Campbell. The leading tackler among defensive linemen for the Sooners. We called Aubrey Beaver's name a whole lot today. Uh, Beaver's another semifinalist for the Buckus Award, uh, number 56. Uh, Sooner coaches sort of challenging him just a little bit, saying he's not having a very good second half to this year. And, and Beaver's last week against Missouri had a very good game. The Beaver call. <laughs> Leave it to the Beaver. Leave it to the Beaver. Third and seven. Incomplete. The pass was intended there for Shannon Culver, but incomplete. So it's three and out again for Jones and the Cowboys. Talking about Aubrey Beavers and Keith Burns. Of the two Butkus semifinalists that are on the field today, I thought Beavers was really the more active and, and really had a better chance. But as you say, the last few games have not been the greatest for him. But he is a specimen. He's a, he looks like he's cut out of granite. 4% mm -hmm. body fat on Aubrey Beavers. 6'2", 230. Mills comes up to make the fair catch at the 42-yard line. So Scott Tyner, he might be getting worn out. That punt from Scott Tyner is 32 yards into the win. He's not had a good day punting. The ball comes in as the leader in the Big 8 at 44.3 yard average and also among the top 10 in net average. Well, he's coming into today at punted 58 times. Blanton had punted 38 times, giving an indication of how maybe woeful the offense has been for the Cowboys this year. 
First and 10 for Oklahoma. Gundy needing just over 200 yards of total offense yet today to move into the number two spot in total offense in the Big A. He's already in the number three spot, passing Frank Sire of Kansas today. And that time it's Dwayne Chandler. But as you mentioned, Jim, it's going to be tougher for Gundy to pick up those numbers with the 24-0 lead. Well, as they run Chandler up the middle, we'll probably see a lot more of that here in the later stages of the third quarter and throughout the fourth quarter, assuming this game stays as it is. And there's really no indication to uh, show that Oklahoma State is going to do anything to move the football. They haven't so far in the second half as they did in the first half. Under nine minutes to go, third quarter. And to give again to Chandler. Let's go down to Duke Fry. Thanks, Dave. You know, at the start of the ball game, we talked about the fact this is the last year for artificial turf here in Norman. Take a look at the turf. This one's 13 years old. They've had an artificial turf surface here for the last 25 years, but they're going to natural grass, and you can see why. This turf is just about worn out, and with the way everybody's going back to the natural surfaces to help protect against injuries, the Sooners are going to be the first in the Big 8 to do it. There are no other schools with grass, but expect it to come. Now, Jim, I'll get your comments on that in just a second. Third and one for Oklahoma. Gundy on the quarterback keeper. Takes it down to the 30. Should be a first down. Well, the recommendation of the athletic department to the Board of Regents is to go to grass. They have to vote on that still. The indication is they will go to grass here at Oklahoma. Your thoughts being a former player who played a lot at Mile High Stadium with the Denver Broncos, uh, natural grass there. What are your thoughts? I, I loved it. I loved playing on natural grass. It, it does make you feel faster. You do have uh, you more turf. control uh, on turf. Right. It makes you feel faster. You have more control over your cuts and that. But the game, I think, for injuries and for a lot of other reasons, should be played on natural grass. I agree with you. Wherever you can grow grass, let's grow. In these outdoor stadiums, why not? Talking about grass at Missouri as well. As James Allen goes around the far side and picks up three or four. And I think that's a good move to go to grass fields in the Big Eight. And uh, it, it just makes for a better ball game. I, was it Bum Phillips who said, if, you, if cows don't eat it, I don't want to play on it or something <laughs> yeah. like that? It would figure and a guy that bit. played in the Dome. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> His team did, did anyway. <laughs> well, a gain of four for Allen. Second down, six yards to go. Allen now with 52 yards on the ground. His counterpart, Gerald Moore, with 57 on the ground. So the tailbacks, 109 yards combined today for OU. Second and six. That time it's Chandler up the gut. And again, Oklahoma keeping it close to the vest right now, trying to run the clock for the 24-0 lead. Once again, next week, the Sooners will have the week off and then the regular season finale and their normal date with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That one up in Lincoln for the Cowboys. Next week, they'll close things out at home against Kansas State. Kansas State with a chance to go to a bowl game this year. With a win today, they would qualify. Chandler also in the mix as far as running is concerned. Look out, Gundy in trouble. Probably lost a yard on that play. Javon Langford, the one that messed that one up, along with Jason Gilden. Okay, uh, Kale just kept this on his own. Maybe he wanted to go naked boot. He might be saying, I want to try to catch you, big brother, in that total offense. <laughs> Standings in the big eight. Kind of faked the pitch or faked the handoff and looked like it was going to be just a naked bootleg, but nowhere to go. Blanton on for his second field goal attempt of the year of the uh, game. Uh, this one from 41 yards out, a 41-yard attempt. And the kick is up, and it is no good. Off to the right. So Blanton misses for just the fifth time all year. One of the first miscues for the Sooners today. Still, Oklahoma has the big lead of 24 to nothing. So we have another new quarterback in for the Cowboys, Mark Wilson now, a junior out of Upland, California, junior college transfer, Wilson, out of Citrus Junior College. He threw that touchdown pass last week in the fourth quarter, a touchdown to Fred Thomas of 25 yards. He is 
One of three passing on the year. The one being the touchdown. That's right. His first completion of his career, first touchdown of his career. <laughs> Not a bad all-in-one <laughs> ratio there, huh? Oh, almost picked off, and I'll tell you what, Anderson thinking he should have had it. I think he was looking end zone uh -huh. before he got it. Yeah, you got to catch it before you score. John Anderson has two interceptions so far this year, and the former walk-on, the big hitter, has this one in his hands. A tough catch, but when it hits your hands like that, he might have been looking at the goal line rather than at the football. So third and 11 again. How many times have we called out third and long for the Cowboys today? Just about every drive. Look at that, 0 for 8 on third down today. On the year, the Cowboys 33% coming into today. And on the draw play, going for the first down. Out of bounds, right at the 31. He needed to get to the 34-yard line, and Thompson shoved out. So Oklahoma State now with nine possessions on the day. Three and out, now eight times. Wow. They've tried a lot of different things, three different quarterbacks that they go to Mark Wilson on this past series, which to me is a little bit of a surprise. He got the action last week. Yes, he did throw the touchdown pass, but Mark Wilson came in the ball game uh, really to run the option. They think he's a good option quarterback. Tyner on for really his eighth punt of the day, the seventh one that counts. He had that one call back because of the roughing of the kicker. This one a boomer. B.J. Mills at his own 22. A good kick that time from Tyner. Tyner, whose average uh, will drop some today because of that average of 34. That one, a 47-yard punt, his longest of the day. Now, the rain has gone away. It is still a chilly day here in Norman. The forecasters were saying temperatures in the 60s today. They must have been forecasting something for either Texas or Florida. <laughs> it is not in the 60s in Norman today. Don't get testy just because you forgot your overcoat. <laughs> Well, I have a bone to pick with most meteorologists anyway, for the most part. <laughs> Hard to find an overcoat big enough for a guy my size. This is true. I thank our director, Mike Diamond, for the use of his. In the warm confines of our production truck. Gundy will run it. And goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A little bit of a late hit there again. Eric Hobbs makes the stop. Uh, Gundy just patting him on the helmet like no harm, no foul. Well, Gundy making uh, progress, making yardage. A nice uh, seven-yard yard gain. And he started that play by running into his left guard, Joe Corolla. Gundy has 15 yards on the ground today, by the way. Of course, in the quarterback statistics, you factor in the quarterback sacks as negative yards. Second and three for the Sooners. 35. Little more. Tell you what, the adjustments the Cowboys have made have paid off. Javon Langford stops Gerald Moore for a loss. And Langford made a good play there as he was wrestled to the ground by Ricky Brady, the tight end. He gets back up. Watch on the right side of your screen. Watch Brady just take down Langford, number 89. Look at that. That should be a holding call, but then Langford gets off the turf and makes the play that's a heck of a play by a true freshman sure is and third and six now let's get ready for a safari maybe he read the uh, meteorologist report <laughs> as well and thought it was going to be hot today he brought a safari cap and oh man he said what happened <laughs> oklahoma on the other hand has done well on third down today 70 percent This one is picked off by Langford. And Gundy tries to make the tackle. Langford with the hurdle job. And the Cowboys are in business. Hmm. All the way down to the seven yard line. Who got his hand on it first? I think it was Ainsley. Number 40 is going to come up the middle on the blitz. And I think he's the one who gets his hand on it. Or is it Williams? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's Tyler Williams, 95. But in any event, watch the one-handed grab you see there by Javon Langford. Yeah, it is 95, Tyler Williams. But a one-handed grab. Look at this athletic ability. And then he almost keeps his feet right here to score. But he goes down. Oklahoma, first and goal. First and goal at the seven-yard line for the Cowboys. By far their best field position. 
Wilson is smothered at the six. The first seven games of this Bedlam series, this is the 88th meeting, Oklahoma won by shutout. 26 times overall, the Sooners have shut out the Cowboys. Pat Jones wants his group to not be the 27th victim. Second and goal at the five. Third and goal at the five. Nothing doing for Joe Jefferson. Outstanding speed on the defensive side of the ball for the Sooners. Closing holes very quickly, giving those Cowboy running backs very little room. Now Lewis Adams checks in, another freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan. He is their short yardage specialist. This is third and goal from the five. You might expect something, too, to Raphael Denson. He is the big play man for the Cowboys, and now Mark Wilson confused. The play came in late, and he's forced to take a timeout. 2.14 to go in this third quarter. The Cowboys trying to get on the board. Denson has came into Oklahoma State now in his junior campaign. Denson came in, and he was one of those guys that Pat Jones was counting on to take the place of Barry Sanders, a running back. Denson, though, not big enough to do that. And now they try to make Denson the big play guy at the flanker position as we get on to our big play guy, Duke Fry. Thanks, Dave. Well, Mark Wilson, you know, hasn't played that much this season. A lot of times quarterbacks will have the plays on a little wrist chart. But if you take a look at Wilson's towel hanging in front of him, when you get a chance to look at that, you'll notice the play chart is on the back side of the towel. It's taped all the way down it with a whole series of plays. And that was the confusion. He got the signals from the sideline, looked down on the chart, and either couldn't find the corresponding play or didn't know what the sign was. That's why they were forced to call timeout. And we can see it flapping there as he's running back. <laughs> he's got the whole flip card. Yeah, the, the <laughs> wrist wasn't big enough. <laughs> they have a heck of a game plan. You got to put it on a towel. Well, let's see what the call is here on third and goal from the five. Again, it's Lewis Adams dotting the eye for OSU. On the option, they stuff it. Oklahoma stops them. Big play there by Corey. Well, what Mark Wilson does is run the option. He's just going to try to run it to his left spats in motion, and he has nowhere to go. He can't pitch it. Coming from the backside, great pursuit, great speed. Fake field goal, end zone, touchdown. Roger Franks. Wait a minute. was wide open and the pass was low well you can't blame him. he's not even in the picture here Oklahoma did not realize that Franks was there and there it is the ball bounces off his chest and hit the ground a good call by the official the pass was there from yeah, Loveland it was there it did not skip and hit Franks right in the gut but bounced onto the turf but a brilliant play I didn't see him out there, and obviously the Sooners didn't see him out there. He was just flanked all the way out to the left side. Franks, a senior, had just one career touchdown. That would have been two, but he dropped it in the end zone. So Oklahoma still has the shutout going for him. James Allen trying to run out of the hole, and he picks up about three yards before Richie Ainsley can stop him there. Well, Duke, you were right down there. What did it look like from your angle? Well, when Pat Jones made that play call, he held up three the three fingers with a circle, kind of, and, J and Franks came out of the huddle running to the sidelines late like he was leaving the field, but he never left the field. He just stopped over at the line of scrimmage. That's why he was so wide open. Nobody figured that he was a player in the field of play anymore. He was leaving the field of play, but the pass was incomplete. It squirted under his arms, and the point touched the ground, and he tried to roll over he got the one official to believe that he'd made the catch but the other two that had the open angle to see it saw the right call Allen 
on the pitch back. Breaking a couple of tackles. Slides on a bound. Hit down right at the 14-yard line, about a yard shy of that first down marker. Well, Duke, uh, you had the good angle on it. What did it look like to you? Incomplete? Yes, it did look incomplete to me. No question about it. All right. We had a good look at it, too, from our camera angle. And Roger Franks could just not hang on. So if the Cowboys do indeed go on to get shut out in this game, they'll remember that play. Well, appropriate for today when it rains, it pours, right? And it's pouring on the Cowboys right now. Oklahoma, total yard domination of this contest. And first down domination. And scoreboard domination as well. 24 nothing OU. 49 seconds to go, third quarter. And that'll be a first down for Chandler. Chandler picks it up, they'll move the sticks. So Gundy throws the interception, picked off by Langford, who takes it down to the seven. And the Cowboys could gain just two yards down to the five. They try the fake field goal. Not a bad play from Pat Jones. It certainly worked by the design yeah, it just uh, was incomplete just the, the pass execution. was there yeah the execution didn't work you have to wonder about the Okie State defense now are they going to be able to come through being on the field a lot today their offense doesn't come through once again I might talk to you about the psychology of that well, uh, Chandler I mean you're, you're a defensive player you've given your offense the ball at the seven yard line you've got to be disappointed when they come away you with do, zero and points. I wouldn't be surprised as a matter of fact I've even heard some rumblings that there's a little bit of finger pointing going on on the Cowboys sideline not necessarily today but just for the whole season because of the way the season has gone they have performed so poor offensively and uh, that's all almost a natural thing to happen well that's the end of the third quarter no scoring in that third stanza we have 15 minutes to play the oklahoma sooners continue their domination of the cowboys and oklahoma state shooting themselves in the foot by missing on the fake field goal it's still 24 zip oklahoma in norman a beautiful fall day uh, turning more beautiful now the rain threat going away well, certainly Gary Gibbs and his club have threatened all day against the Cowboys 24 nothing the lead as we get set to start the fourth quarter here in Norman with Duke Fry and Jim Ryan I'm Dave Armstrong and has been all OU today the two freshman tailback for Oklahoma, James Allen, Gerald Moore, both known as Thunder and Lightning. Mm -hmm. Well, they've got 61 and 54 yards, respectively. But then Dwayne Chandler's thrown in there. He's got 61 yards. What should we call him? Wind? <laughs> I don't know. Tornado? <laughs> no. Rain? I don't know. <laughs> Thunder, Lightning, and... Uh, take it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you're, you're the one that started that. You finished it. <laughs> Look at that. Time of possession. Mm. Defensive guys might be getting worn out for Oklahoma. Been on the field a lot. And the draw play to Chandler. Chandler gets it up to the 27, 28 yard line, close to another first down. Several of the Oklahoma State defenders are having a tough time getting off the blocks up front. As you see, hat on hat, you just don't see too many Oklahoma State guys without a red jersey in front of them. You were talking earlier, Jim, about the defense perhaps losing some emotion because of the offense not being able to put any numbers on the board. You get mad. What does it do to you, though, when you lose your emotion in a football game? Is it more difficult to play this game when yes. you're not emotional? Oh, yes. You have to be mentally ready to play the game. I as, uh, think a lot of people believe that playing football is 80 to 90 percent mental. You have to be mentally ready to do it. If you're not, you're not going to perform very well. And again, the misdirection. Allen got around the blocks. It was Javon Langford that was coming hard, but Allen outran him to the corner. And another gain of 10 yards. And that play right there might speak to the emotions of this contest, how Allen was able to outrace Javon Langford. Yeah, because the scheme had Oklahoma State in position to make the play. But as you say, Allen just made a physical play of getting around them and just out-athleted, so to speak, mm -hmm. the Oklahoma State defenders. A gain of nine, second and one. See Allen already 70 yards to the end, 102 yards rushing against the Texas Longhorns. Well, next week we'll be in Kansas as the Jayhawks take on the Missouri Tigers in our Big 8 game of the week. It's our season finale.
Howard for the first down up to the 39-40 yard line. Jason Gilden makes the stop. Gilden, what an outstanding year he has had and career at Oklahoma State. He has pretty much started his entire career for the Cowboys. He's the all-time sack leader in Cowboy history. And when you think of a guy by the name of Leslie O'Neill who played for Oklahoma State, that's pretty good company. He broke O'Neill's record. He has a 35 and a half career sacks. So O'Neill had 33. Coaches really believe he's playing at a pace to be a considered for all America honors, not just all Big 8 honors. Mm -hmm. So another first down for Oklahoma. Gundy wants a lot. He's looking for Hall. Does Hall have it? Yes, he took does. it away from Harmon. Yes. Wow. That's exactly what he did. Harmon had that ball in his hand, and Hall took it away from him. Here's Gundy just launching this ball deep, and he's going to ask Hall to go up and get it. They both get their hands on it, but the strength of the hands of one Albert Hall is able to have him haul it in, so to speak. A 36-yard pass play. See that? Harmon actually had that ball in his hands. Hall took it right away. This will be a great angle right here. Look. That's the ball up for grabs, and Hall able to juggle it and hang on before he went down. You know, from that angle, I'm not so sure he caught that ball. It looked like it hit the turf. What a day he has had. You know, it, it, well, after this play. And the draw play to Chandler. Still on his feet. Chandler still on his feet. Touchdown, Chandler! Chandler's second touchdown of the day. Well, we said that the Oklahoma State defense might be getting a little tired, a little frustrated, and it showed there, I think, as a number of missed tackles. They were in position to make the play. Chandler had no right scoring a touchdown other than his own individual effort of getting there. It's going to be hard on this team to pick an offensive player of the game. Chandler with two touchdowns. Albert Hall with a couple of touchdowns. Gundy with a couple of touchdown passes. Allen's nearing 100 yards. Oh, what a show for the Sooners today. They go, and they make it 31-0. They go to the one back. It's really a little draw. And he's got nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. But then Burns misses the tackle. And then I think it's Burner misses the tackle. Two other defenders miss the tackle. He gets into the right side of the end zone. And just strength by Dwayne Chandler. He looks like he stopped right there. When you have a guy stopped and he's has looks like he's got nowhere to go and then he's able to restart and then still score, you know that your defense is not swarming to the football. Now the Sooner Schooner is slowed a bit, but it's still going. Like the ever ready battery. And it's Oklahoma 31 to nothing. You gotta be kidding. These guys heard the meteorologist report of temperatures in the 60s today. Uh-uh. <laughs> These guys are broadcasting majors, I can tell. <laughs> Oklahoma 31 to nothing. Ooh. Big hit on Shannon Culver. The Sooners go 95 yards, Jim, in nine plays. And they eat up four minutes plus. Chandler with a 23-yard run. And it's Oklahoma 31 to nothing. Gundy today, 11 of 16, 176 yards. Chandler now 94 yards on the ground. And Mark Wilson still in there, quarterback for the Cowboys. And a give to Thompson. Boy, not much room to run for the Cowboys. Again, Oklahoma is saying, well, you're going to try to pass on us, huh? Or run on us. We're going to stop the run and force you to throw the ball. Cedric Jones again making another stop for the Sooners. Oklahoma is bringing a lot of guys up to that line and daring the Cowboys to throw it. Mm. 11 carries, 26 yards for the true freshman, David Thompson, so far. Mm, total yards. Total domination. Batted up in the air and down on the turf. Incomplete. 
There's Aubrey Beavers coming up with a big play. Number 56, and I think he's going to be an excellent pro linebacker. Aubrey Beavers getting a big mitt up right in the face of Mark Wilson and batting that one away. Looks like a block shot on a basketball court. And third and ten again for the Cowboys. Benson going in motion. And now Wilson to throw on play action. Wants to go deep. And this one batted away. Good defensive coverage by William Shankle again. Three and out again for the Cowboys. My goodness. Scott Tyner going to have to ice his leg by the time this game is over. Coming on to punt once again. And P.J. Mills back to get it. a popular movie out now with Sylvester Stallone, Demolition Man. It's uh, been a demolition today for Oklahoma. Tanner gets off a good one. Mills takes it at the 24. Yeah, a good open field tackle over there. And the uh, punt return of about five or six yards is all. A punt of 51 yards. 11.22 to go in this one. 31 nothing. OU. Dale Gundy and the Oklahoma Sooners go back to work. Gundy, by the way, now needs 174 total yards to pass Phil Bradley and move into the number two spot on the all-time total offense charts. And uh, Gundy over there on the sideline getting the final instructions from Watson Brown. I'm not so sure that that's why he's still in the ballgame is that perhaps Gary Gibbs and the Oklahoma Sooners would like to see him move up those charts. He's already number one passer, number one in total offense in Oklahoma Sooner history. But uh, maybe they know that, and maybe it's important to Kale himself, that he wants to move up those big eight charts and get right behind his big brother, Mike. They might feel like they owe it to him. Gundy, one of the most highly recruited players coming out of high school in Midwest City. And uh, Gundy choosing... Oklahoma over Oklahoma State and several other schools around the country and uh, coaches might feel like they owe it to it. But uh, by doing that though, they're not really throwing the ball and allowing him the chance to gain a lot more yards that way. They're really rushing the ball now and trying to keep the clock moving. Clock nearing 11 minutes. What makes Kale Gundy stand out is not just his athletic ability, it's the way he intelligently plays the quarterback position. He's just got the instinct to play it, because I don't know if he's necessarily got the strongest arm. I mean, throwing downfield, he threw the ball pretty accurately, but it's his intelligence and his decision-making that have been outstanding. And Broderick Roberson hobbling over to the sidelines for OU. Now Gundy, his last four games, including this one, he has now thrown seven touchdown passes and thrown just two interceptions during that time. And the one today was a batted ball. Gundy to throw on second and ten. Tries to force the ball into Gerald Moore, and it's incomplete, and the flag goes down. Going to call holes against the Sooners. Last 26 games, Oklahoma has won 24, lost one, and tied one. The tie came last year. The loss came in 76 to Oklahoma State for Oklahoma. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot on the foul, second down. They're going to back this one way up because it comes from the spot of the foul. And uh, on the binoculars, this guy finds out that the ball is spotted way back at the 10-yard line now. He might be in search of Herman San Diego or Duke Fry. So it's second and 29. This will help Gundy somewhat. He's going to throw the ball now. Well, he tried to throw it last time, but uh, the penalty hurts. 
second down though I'll call it 28 they need to get to just outside the 38 yard line Oklahoma has now been penalized for over 100 yards today eight times and the draw play Collier stopped short of the 20 at the 18 Trent Fisher well, he got Collier and also got part of the jersey taken off I think when you're a frustrated at defense, you start doing things like trying to choose sides, like you see Werner do right there. And then Trent Fisher is able to come up and make the play. But instead of playing the technique and playing the defense as you know you're supposed to, you start getting out of your game and you start trying to do something different to make a big play. And what it ends up doing is hurting you more than helping you. Again, the draw play on third and 21. Again, it's Collier. He'll be well shy of any first down. But he does get it up to the 26, 27 yard line. And Oklahoma will be punting. Burns, Charles Berger make the stop there for Oklahoma State. Well, my thought is if all Oklahoma is going to do is run the football at this point, get Gundy out of there. Sure. I agree with you. If they're not going to try to pad his statistics, and I think it's a good point that they don't, and that's kind of rubbing salt in the wound to the Cowboys, but Terrence Brown get a few snaps at this point. Blanton gets it away. Harmon takes it at the 35. Good coverage by Oklahoma. So with 9.05 to go, the run of 40 yards by Blanton. A couple of uh, OU fans happy with the score right now, 31-0 Oklahoma. I assume they're OU fans. Well, because they look happy. Look at the red gloves on, the mittens. Well, they could be Oki State fans who just resigned to the fact that their team's going down to defeat today. <laughs> Ever the no. optimist, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're seeing that glass is half full of you. <laughs> His glass is empty, folks. They're happy either way. It's <laughs> OU 31 nothing. The Cowboys, they have the ball at their own 39 yard line. Wilson wants to throw hit hard right after he lets go of it. The pass was intended for Shannon Culver incomplete. Culver went off his hands and incomplete. Good pass though by Mark Wilson. Yeah, it really was. It was put on the money and Culver should have been, could have come up with this ball. And Culver's only got one game in his career without catching a ball. And nice pressure put on there. It was thrown a little bit behind him, but I think the ball could have been caught right there. Mark Wilson going down on his back after he releases the ball is you have to be somewhat of a pretty tough guy to stand in there and play quarterback outside of the interception by Langford that gave the Cowboys the ball on the seven this is the best field position for Oklahoma State screen pass complete to Jefferson but man oh man Oklahoma is everywhere defensively today that time the stop came from number 13 Kyle Hill and it is total domination. Oklahoma State had two linemen out there in position, and no one blocked Hill. He just came walking right through them, made the tackle. That was the first pass completed by Oklahoma State in 10 pass attempts, and that one goes for a loss. That includes three different quarterbacks. Oklahoma State today, 3 of 14 through the air as a team for minus two yards, and that one incomplete. Make it three of 15 for minus two yards passing. How many times do you see minus yards Boy, passing in a game? That's unbelievable. It's unreal. You have to throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage and get tackled to get minus yards passing. <laughs> and we don't make, mean to make fun of the Cowboys, but I did just get a message in my headset, Dave. Pat Jones would like to see you on the sideline. They need a quarterback. I don't want to go anywhere near <laughs> Pat right now. You cannot be a happy camper. Well, they've tried three different quarterbacks. Maybe Armstrong can get the job done. It would be minus 70 yards passing if I got in there. The Tyner on again. Tyner's getting tired. And this one will take a sideways bounce and finally be stopped dead at the 20. <laughs> this looks like, what's that game where... <laughs> they play with the uh, the balls like a shuffleboard thing. What's the name of that team? Help me out here. Curling. Curling. Thank you. <laughs> it's like curling. 44-yard punt, but they finally 
time it stops dead at the 20. <laughs> you are giving me that dead stare like <laughs> I'm not helping him. Let's get on to Duke Fry. That's not Duke. All right. Well, you know, Duke. one of the benefits of being the home team, particularly when the weather turns nasty like it did today, is you've got your heaters, those blowers over on the sidelines. Oklahoma State probably didn't figure with the temperature supposed to be in the 60s today that they would need theirs. They didn't bring them on the road. So you oh, got the OU guys who are winning and having that nice, warm, toasty bench. Oklahoma State not only having a bad day on the field, but when you stand on the sidelines, you get to freeze your tail off. And a new quarterback for Oklahoma, Terrence Brown, number three, coming in for Cale Gundy. So Gundy's done for the day. And the Oklahoma coach is thinking along with us, as long as we're just going to hand off, let's give Brown some snaps. Ball foul. start on the offense. And uh, First down. ball start against Oklahoma. Another penalty for the Sooners today. What's that, their 11th of the day? There's Terrence Brown, the freshman out of Fort Bend, Texas. Well, they're not really sure who is the heir apparent, so to speak, to Kale Gundy. You would think, uh, by virtue of being the second-team quarterback, it might be Terrence Brown, just a red-shirt freshman, but that is not written in granite. Chandler on the run. He gets it back up to the 23-yard line. And that's going to be something, some big shoes to fill when you try to replace yeah. Kale Gundy next year. Well, Terrence Brown has got 4-3 speed. He could run that option that Watson Brown has kind of brought back. And, He's got a pretty good arm, but he's really more of an option quarterback. Saw Barry Switzer here earlier today. Switzer's still a strong proponent of the wishbone. And now we have another stoppage of play here. Barry's son, Doug, is the, I guess, third team quarterback mm -hmm. here. Chandler on that last run, by the way, goes over 100 yards for the day. He's at 102 right now. Well, I don't know what Pat Jones and the Oklahoma State Cowboys are going to do to try to recover from this beating they're taking right now, 31 to nothing. And the Cowboys are going to fall to 0-6 in the conference, and Brown trips up, goes down, loses the football. Is it going to belong to Oklahoma State, or do they say he's down on uh, contact? Remember, in college football, once you go down to the turf, you are down, whether you've been hit by uh, the opposition or not. Terrence Brown's just going to try to run the option, kind of a counter option as he reverse pivots out of there. And I think he just trips over his fullback, Collier. And you're right, as soon as his knee touches, he's down. There's no need for the linebacker Hodge to come in and, and nail him like that, but no flag. You see Gundy today, 11-16, 175 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Had one interception, that one on a batted ball. Allen trying to force his way through the middle and somehow squirts through and gets up to the 25-yard line. And, and both teams right now are kind of just standing up and hand fighting. This is not a real intense ball game as the clock winds down under, is that six minutes to go? Under, I, well, it's right at six. Your eyes are getting... Yeah, I can't even... Yeah, right, okay. six, I couldn't tell if that was a six or an eight. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? The eyes are the first to go, right? First thing to go. Oh. And Blanton to boot it away. A low kick. Herman lets it bounce, takes it on one half. And smothered at the 38-yard line. Under six to go now, Jim. Thanks, Dave. Can you keep me informed? Sure will. Each minute. I'll let you know. When you hear a gun go off, you know it's over. <laughs> Your ears still you know, good? Talking about the uh, Cowboys and the fact that they actually could go 0-7 in the Big 8 this year, and that'd be the first time in the history of the Oklahoma State program for them to go 0-7. They actually did go 0-6 once. In 1963, their last game was canceled because of the assassination of President Kennedy. So he did not play the last game. He saved himself from going over seven. He went over six. You, my friend, are a fountain of information. <laughs> you did not know that, did you? Well, I did, but oh, you see? pointed that out. For those that we may have still with us. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, Sooners are going to improve to eight and two on the year, four and two in the Big Eight Conference. And getting ready for their showdown with Nebraska. Still one of the great games and great rivalries in college football, isn't it? OU Nebraska. Uh -huh. 
Well, a Big 8 insights and highlights. You can watch the Big 8 Gridiron Report here on Prime every week. Drew Goodman, Dave Logan, every now and then Jim Ryan take a look at the week's Big 8 football plays, all the big hits, the big plays. They give you the inside stories of all the Big 8 action. So check your local listings to see where the Big 8 Gridiron Report will play in your area. Third down and five for the Cowboys. Wilson coming on the option and another third down where they do not get the first down for the Cowboys. How many is that today? I've lost track. I've, I can't, I'm not, I don't dare take off my shoes and socks to keep track. I think you'd need more than hands and feet. Jay, I'm just going to ask you, how, what is Oklahoma State on third down today? On third down today, Oklahoma State is 0 for 13. Mm. Don King, Jay Carl Guyman are crack statisticians on today, helping us out with all the numbers today. Tyner on to boot it away again. Mills at the nine. Look out, Mills drops the football. Oklahoma might have pounced on it at the 25-yard line. They did. Oklahoma gets it back. So 335 to go in this one. 31 nothing Oklahoma. It up like that at William no. & Mary? <laughs> no. Actually, I do that a lot just at home. The That's some kind of artwork there. First and 10 for the Sooners. The ball at their own 25-yard line. Terrence Brown in at quarterback's going to throw it deep and incomplete. Too much mustard on that one. Brown, two of six passing now here in his freshman campaign. Oh, I know that Pat Jones and Gary Gibbs are, are pretty close friends. They uh, are competitors, but I don't know if Pat Jones would be real happy with Terrence Brown throwing deep with 3.30 to go in the ball game, up 31-0. You, know, you want to get your quarterback some reps, but there's Pat Jones. Well, uh, if, if Pat's upset, he's upset about a lot of things. That's probably one of them. Yeah, but that's the least of his that's worries. That's the least right. of his worries. Bendy had a good day today. It's a sooner offense and defense. And Gerald Moore goes basically nowhere on that play. In fact, lost a yard or so. Look who's still playing hard. Yep. Number 40, Richie Ainsley. We talked about him in the first quarter. Had a heck of a first quarter. And really a, a very good linebacker. 6'2", 235, out of Dallas. Had the uh, interception against Iowa State. Again, I'll say, I think he's an underrated linebacker, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him playing on Sundays. See the last shutout against Arkansas State last year. Sooners going for the shutout here today. Brown looking for the first down. He's got it and more up to the 40. Important thing there for Oklahoma as far as going for the shutout is concerned is they'll be able to chew up some more clock. Watch how many missed tackles again there is for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They don't do a bad job defending in here, but look, there's one, there's two, at least. These guys are just kind of throwing their arms out there and not really wrapping up, and that's just a sign of a very tired and a very frustrated defense. So another first down, the clock winding down now, under two and a half to go in this one. Pitch back to Gerald Moore, not elude that tackle and a loss of a couple. Cowboys still have one timeout if they should choose to use it. You wouldn't think they would, but if they are going to try to get any points on the board, bite your tongue. <laughs> Two minutes to go. We'll give you the unofficial two-minute warning. <laughs> we don't pause, though, for a break. And up to the 45 goes Terrence Brown. Don't forget, next week on our Big A Game of the Week, we close out the year with Kansas and Missouri. That's always a wild one. Mm. Usually highest scoring, lots of yardage, both ways. It'd be fun. Missouri and Kansas from Lawrence next week. Go to another Memorial Stadium. 
Jayhawks and the Tigers. Can you believe the rash of injuries that Jayhawks suffered this year? Mm -hmm. It was incredible. Unreal. Unreal. Time to give to Collier. He's got another first down, and now Oklahoma can just sit on the football. That'll do it, folks. Oklahoma, with just 106 to go, can just sit on the football, and they will have victory number eight in their back pocket and victory number 70 over the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Well, they call this the Bedlam Series, but it hasn't been much Bedlam other than the Oklahoma Sooners kind of putting the, the Cowboys to bed. Boy, this one is put to bed, isn't it? And coming out wants to stay in bounds and forced out of bounds. <laughs> My goodness, that'll stop the clock with 42 seconds to go. And all the players on the sideline and on the field saying, what are you doing that for? This game's over. Now you got to make a snap it again. Sit down. So a couple of touchdowns by Chandler today. A couple of touchdown passes from Gundy to Albert Hall. This game never in doubt. Oklahoma has led throughout and have dominated throughout. And Oklahoma State, almost a parallel game to last week against Colorado where they lost a 31 to 14, victimized by big plays by Charles Johnson. Today it's big plays by Albert Hall and also the running attack of the Sooners, but Albert Hall coming up with a number of big plays. Oklahoma today, 330 yards rushing today. Wow. Pat Jones has seen this season unravel for him and this day, but still clapping, encouraging his defense. His defense has not played all that badly when you consider the overall uh, situation they were put in by their offense. Well, a pitch out. He go out of bounds? Yep, stop the clock. 13 seconds to go. Gerald Moore goes out of bounds. And that brings up fourth down. See, if you're Terrence Brown, just hang on to the ball. It goes down. It's, yeah. Clock's done. I mean, Oklahoma now, State could stop it. They've got the timeout, but I don't think they're going to. Well, if they don't stop them uh, from gaining a first down, then it's going to be a change of possession. Yeah. So the Cowboys will have to run a play. It's going to be hard for us to pick a player of the game, isn't it? Uh, Gundy, a uh, couple of touchdown passes. Albert Hall with some spectacular catches. Two of those for touchdowns. Chandler goes over 100 yards. And let's see, does he have the first down? I think so, it's a 30. They'll stop the clock long enough to move the chains, and then they'll restart things, and that'll do it. Oklahoma will not need to run another play. Oklahoma over 500 yards of total offense today and holding the Cowboys to 26 yards of total offense. I think that's the biggest surprise. We knew that Oklahoma State did not have a very prolific offense, but to be held to 26 yards, pretty bad. And minus two yards passing. Minus two yards passing for the Cowboys today. So Gary Gibbs, he improves his record over the Cowboys to 4-0-1. Pat Jones still winless against the Sooners. He falls to 0-9-1 against Oklahoma. All Sooners today, OU big over OSU, 31 to nothing the final score. Gundy and Hall combined for two touchdowns, and it was Dwayne Chandler scoring two more times. Chandler, he now has nine touchdowns on the year. So the Sooners improved to eight and two overall, getting ready for their showdown with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The Sooners improved to four and two in the conference. The Sooners bowl bound. The Cowboys will try to regroup. Their record drops to three and seven overall and 0 oh and six in the big eight as we get down to Duke Fry. Coach, your team played exceptionally well. You opened things up right from the get-go despite the bad weather in the first half. Well, we couldn't just sit there and, and not run our offense. Uh, Oklahoma State's too good on defense. We had to go out there and run our offense. Uh, really came off the football extreme well earlier in the game and, and also Kel hit some key passes, and that certainly helped us once we got the big lead. Your line on both sides of the ball really dominated this ball game. 
Well, again, we rolled off the football pretty good. We rushed the football early in, in the game, and especially in the first half, extremely well. And defensively, we really controlled the game throughout. From a defensive standpoint, have you seen your defense play much better this year? No, this is probably the best we've played. I tell you what, we had guys swarming the football. We did a great job at tackling, didn't give up uh, any big plays. And really, it's a tribute to the way this football team's bounced back all year. And you don't get to sit on this for very long without having to look ahead to Nebraska. Well, we got a couple of days to relax and uh, grade this film. Then we got Nebraska in a couple of weeks. So again, it's a good win for our seniors, good way to end up the, the home season right here. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks a lot, Duke. It is a good way for the 14 seniors to close out their career. And Owen Field with the big win over Oklahoma State. The Sooners dominating the Cowboys. 31 to nothing the final. We'll look at the player of the game when we return to Norman in just a moment. Oklahoma winning big 31 to nothing over Oklahoma State. A lot of stars for the Sooners today, both offensively and defensively. Tough to pick, but we're going to go with Dwayne Chandler, who had 113 yards on 15 carries and scored two touchdowns, including this one from 23 yards out. Well, Chandler, just an outstanding day, and we just closed our eyes and pointed at somebody who went down their roster, and we came up with Chandler as the player of the game because, as you say, we could have picked a number of guys, including Hall and this man, Gundy. But watch the draw play. Looks like he stopped. A little hesitation there. Runs into one of his players but breaks a one tackle, two tackles, three tackles, four tackles getting into the end zone. That's outstanding effort, outstanding run for Dwayne Chandler. So Chandler, he gets two touchdowns on the day. The other one comes from three yards out in the second quarter. Look at that one right here. And you can't give the game ball or give the player of the game to Chandler without crediting the line up front. They did a heck of a job dominating a very good Oklahoma State defense. They dominated up front all day. Well, I'll be back to put the final wraps on this one as the Sooners wrap up the Cowboys 31 to nothing. Norman and the Sooners, boy, they put it to the Cowboys today. Oklahoma wins the Bedlam Series, beating Oklahoma State for the 70th time overall. This one, 31 to nothing. And Jim, there is a one word for this game, domination. Oklahoma had it all over the Cowboys today. Yeah, the crowd started following out actually a long time ago yeah. because this one was over early. As you say, total domination on both sides of the football. When you can hold a team to 26 yards, total offense, then you're doing something right and I think it was just a little payback time for the Sooners as they were just very unhappy they didn't have a great year last year but going up and tying in Stillwater last year they were looking for revenge well, I've done a lot of football but I think it's the first time I have seen a minus two yards passing minus any yards passing total for a game and that's what Oklahoma State had today and man 31 total yards for the Cowboys and look at the time of possession 40 minutes and the Oklahoma State defense they gave up 507 yards but they really played a game and a half so it's really not that bad a performance by then and, you know one thing you have to wonder about are the whispers in Stillwater going to get a little yeah. bit louder about Pat Jones and, and whether he's going to be able to continue coaching this team or not and to add to the frustration for the Cowboys the one chance they had to score Roger Franks drops at the end zone on a fake field goal when the Cowboys had great field position first and goal from the seven yeah nothing went right for the no. Cowboys and you just have to kind of chalk it up to that maybe it's a little easier for Pat Jones to say look we went down we got our butts kicked and you know we just chalk that up to a bad whipping and then we just go on from there well they have to regroup and try to get ready for Kansas State next week well they do and you just have to mentally stay in it yeah you, you say we can't say we only have one game left you still have to go out and play that game and they try to get their first big eight win good tune up for Gundy and company as they get ready for Nebraska in a couple of weeks for Duke Fry and Jim Ryan this is Dave Armstrong saying so long from Norman. Once again, Oklahoma wins it 31 to nothing.